Hey, everybody. All right. Lost track of time. So let me get my YouTube's set up here so I can see what's going on. And we're going to go to my channel. We're not going to do whatever that was right now. We're going to hit my live stream. All right, now we can go to all messages. There we are. All right, everybody. Gabriel, Laura, Fish Tropic, Robert, Joseph, how are you all? Shirley, Zine, and Steve. 240 bucks. Nice. You know what you need to do with that, right, Steve? Another ninja. Uh, frog bit turning yellow could be, hey, Louise, say, hey, Harley. Uh, frog bit turning yellow could be lack of nitrogen. I know a lot of plants will lose their green color if they're not having enough nitrogen. So I don't know what the nitrate uh, in your aquarium is, but it may need some nitrogen. Uh, you may be giving it too much light. You may be actually like overcooking it uh, and that can turn it yellow, sort of burning it up, so to speak. Um, lack of light's probably not going to turn it yellow. It'll just grow very poorly. Um, I don't know. It might yellow if, if it needs a lot of light and it's not getting enough. It's hard to say. There you go, Steve. That's exactly what put it in a little loon jar. <laughs> and there you go. All right, we got to get everybody fed tonight. And in theory, I should be working on the... You say my lights change. That's not what I had them set at. Uh, in theory, we should be working on the discus tank tonight. I don't know if we're actually going to get around to it. I got my lights. This is not the position I had them set on. That's weird. Hmm. That's what I had them set to do. I wonder if it's uh, the way the cycle is. It does this for a minute or something, and then it jumps and does something else. But I can set it to several different things. I like that one. But we'll see if it stays like that. We'll find out, I guess. Roar. Janice. <clears throat> oh, that ought to be interesting. See what those flea melanistic jobs do. Oh, look, that son of a bitch already changed on me. It's not flashing the way I had it flashing a minute ago. Look at it up there. That's not what I had it set to. All right, well. I don't know. It's got instructions on the side of the little thing telling. It's got like nine different ways I can make it flash. It probably says right on there that it changed. This is like random or something is what I've got it set on. Uh, let's see. We're going to throw some goldfish pellets in there. And in about 20 minutes, this pond is no longer going to be clear because the pellets sink. And then the goldfish go to the bottom and they start doing construction work, moving the rocks around. And, of course, that kicks up all the mulm and everything off the bottom and so the tank is going to be really cloudy here in a little bit but that's all right because when we're done looking at it we're going to turn the light off so i'm throwing a bunch of sinking pellets around and i'll throw some uh granules in there because remember i got a lot of fish in there that are not goldfish i've got um cherry barbs in there i've got guppies i've got platies i've got mollies i've got uh, neon rosy barbs and that's all. And so I like to throw some granules in there around too. But the goldfish like the granules and they'll go down and rummage around in the um, rocks and stuff 
to get to the granules once they settle down onto the bottom. So there's really no winning when I, when I feed food that is a non floating food in this tank, it means that in a little while the tank is going to be a boogered up mess, but whatever, it's a pond. That's what ponds look like. All right, let me find my lighter. I think it's in my pocket. I'll get caught up on comments here in a moment. Salient. See if uh <laughs> see if we can guess the uh, music tonight's gonna be a challenge for you, I think. Wait and see if uh, Sweet Acres joins us here soon. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Hey, Neil. And if I've missed anybody, I'll get caught up on comments here in a moment. We're supposed to get mad rain tomorrow. It's supposed to be like flood conditions at points. So whenever you're ready, Steve, you let me know. You come on out here on the weekend and we'll get that uh, pond dug out. All right. Nope. Not even in the right ballpark, Steve. All right. Let me get caught up to where I was. Somewhere back here. Uh, Luis, not sure I said hello, but hello just in case. Well, yeah, we know the first $60 is going to your sticker. That's a must-have. You need that now. And then the rest can go away for your loon. Hopefully by midsummer or something like that, you'll be able to get it. Although, I doubt it. It's a lot of money to save up for. It's growing really fast. The nitrates are really high. Also, you have a grow light on it a lot. Yeah, either back the light away from it a little bit and reduce the intensity or... That would be my suggestion, because even if you only have it on for a few hours a day, if it's too intense, um, too close to it, that might not be good for it either. TK Tropicals, hello. Nick, I believe I said hello already. Got the shrimp tank all cleaned up. Blue Dream is full of eggs. Nice. Thank you, Laura. Okay. Um, I was going to say, what is so cool, Jen? I say you're talking about the uh, logo. Um, yeah, that is, I. it's awesome. Love it. All right. Zine, salient, Shirley said hello, hello, hello. Getting caught up here. Neil, hello. It's already raining there. Yeah, we're definitely getting rain uh, tomorrow. I had ice on my pond outside this morning. All right, you keep us posted on that, Shirley. Boizzle, the degenerate. How are you this evening? And Chonsta, hello. And I'm caught up. Ba bam. Somebody can stop sign me. And we are going to move on here, I think, from the goldfish pond. Let me turn the sexy lights on. And then we'll turn the big bright ass light off. You know, I got a light. I'm not going to bring it down. I already packed it up. I was so disappointed with it. I turned it. Uh, I packed it back up and put it back in the box to return it. Um, before I really thought about that, I should have brought it down here and at least showed everybody what it looks like. Um, but I got a light that was originally going to be a light to replace the, um, there, I have a light in the ceiling at the foot of my stairs at the landing area, and it's a really bright light. And that's where I do my soil and it's where I do my cuttings. And so I just, I like having a really bright light there. And what I was looking for 
long story short, I, I wound up buying this light that was supposed to be like a high bay UFO LED light. And I thought it was going to shine more or less downwards in, in a semi-focus, kind of like the way a floodlight does flood the area with light, but it also is in a semi-focused fashion. It does, doesn't come out straight off the sides of the light. You know, it is, it is sort of pointed away from it. Well, when I unboxed this thing, it was plenty bright enough. I'll give it that. But immediately I turned it on. I was like, nope. <laughs> I am really, really particular about my light and what I want it to look like, uh, etc. And this light was utter garbage. It hurt my eyes. It was supposed to be 5,000 K, which is the reason I bought it. Uh, I wasn't even looking for that kind of light. I was looking for a different style of light, but everything in that style was 6,500 K. So I don't like 6,500 K. It's too blue. It's almost, I, I just, I don't like it. It's obnoxious. It makes me feel like I'm in a doctor's office or something. Um, I like 5,000 K and when I found the light that was 5,000 K, I was like, Oh sweet. I'll just get that. And so I got it. And then after I bought it, I was like, well, I don't know if I really want this sort of UFO style light or not. So as soon as I got out of the box, turned it on instantly, it was just awful. It was painful to look at. It was so blue. I would be, and I'm not kidding about this. I would not be surprised if it was 10,000 K. Uh, I used to have 10,000 K tubes in a fixture over my, um, uh, when it was back in, when it was my African tank, I used to put a 10,000 K uh, T5 um, and then I'd put a, a 5,000 K next to it. And so I'd get this color blend, but that 10,000 K is really, really blue. It's not quite actinic. You know, you can't call it actinic yet, but it's very blue. And that's what this looked like. It was awful. On top of that, it was one of those cheap ass LEDs that you can kind of almost see it flickering. You know, it, like it wasn't a nice steady light. It was just, it was just garbage. It was horrible. Um, and then on top of all of that, the light was not focused at all. It just came like straight out of the sides of it. And like I couldn't use that thing for anything. I couldn't have used it for my work light. Uh, I was thinking about maybe using it as a, uh, you know, just experiment to see if it works as a grow light or something. And uh, it was just awful. It was horrible. So right back in the box and that's getting shipped back tomorrow. So maybe I'll mess around with something else. I don't know. We'll see. All right. There's some stop signs. Thank you much. All right, I'm getting caught up here. Don't necessarily need to respond to all of this, but let me try to get caught up. What name brand tank do I like? What do I have? Saw so water box. Uh, I don't have any name brand tank. Uh, I couldn't tell you the name of any of the tanks. I guess mine are like Aquion or or Aquatop, I guess, or whatever the ones they sell. Most of mine came from PetSmart. Or, um, yeah, PetSmart. No. PetSmart or Petco? Well, either or. I've gotten them from both. But I don't know what brand they sell. <laughs> no, the goldfish doesn't see anything in the gravel. He just sleeps face down like that all the time when he's not uh, eating. That's all he does is eat and then go face down. All right, I am caught up once again. So if someone else could stop some, yeah, I would appreciate it. Petco's top fin, Pet Smart Aquion. That sounds about right. Hey, Jay. By the way, how are you? All right, let me get some iced tea here. I always got mine um, on their Black Friday sales when everything used to be like half price or I would get them way back in the day. Remember, it's been a long time. It's been eight or nine years since I bought a fish tank. Um, and back in the day, they used to do the dollar a gallon sale at Petco. 
And like they were, they meant it when they said a dollar a gallon, like everything was a dollar a gallon, 55s, 40s. Now they do the dollar a gallon sale, except they exclude 10 gallon tanks and then they don't do anything over 55, but they also don't do the 40 breeders. Uh, like what, what, what tanks do you sell at a dollar a gallon then? I mean, <laughs> you, you've narrowed down the vast majority of every popular tank you have. You don't include in your dollar a gallon sale. Um, you know, but back in the day when they said tanks were a dollar a gallon, they were a dollar a gallon. And I got a lot of tanks that way. I got three, I got two 40 breeders that way for uh, 20 bucks a piece. Of course, it was like $300 to buy the glass to go on top of them because that was ridiculously expensive. I had to buy that online and find it somewhere. All right. What else am I looking for? I'm looking for my algae wafers. That's what most of the fish in this tank like. And we ought to throw a hose in this tank and top it off. In fact, we ought to throw a hose in this tank and do a big ass water change and get the glass wiped down. That's what I plan on doing in the discus tank. But I just put some ChemiClean in there. There's a little bit of cyanobacteria growing here and there. We'll have a look at that in a little while. Um, and so the ChemiClean is still in there doing its thing. I mean, it's still like sudsy and bubbly on the surface. And as long as it's still behaving like that, then it's still working. So I don't want to do a big water change and just drain all that stuff I dumped in there. So I'm going to let it sit. Maybe Sunday night we'll do a water change. We're going to let that ride for now and see how that, um, see how that goes. All right, let me see where I was. All right, there's some signs for me. Thank you much. Uh, let's see. Nope, I got Laura's first on my end. But they both say 8.15, so whatever that means. Sorry there, Sally. You gotta be quick on the draw to beat Laura. <laughs> Laura knows I need to stop sign before I do more often than not. Uh, Chonster, I don't think the dwarf karamis are gonna eat snails. I posted a bunch of stuff on Discord today, but it was all weed stuff. Yeah, the Black Friday sales from PetSmart were usually, they worked out to be about 50% off. They didn't say it was 50% off, and when you looked at the price, it was about 50% off. Yeah, I honestly haven't even been to PetSmart or Petco in quite a while. It's been months. Uh, let's see. All right, someone can stop sign me there. You want to see my stuff? Like what, my weed stuff? Thanks, Sally. Sally nailed it that time. Wham! With Zine coming in a close second and Janice uh, squeaking in a third. Wow, that was fast. They were all three almost simultaneously, but Sally did win that time. <laughs> All right, I want to get to the music before uh, Steve falls asleep. You're still awake, Steve, but I imagine you've got to at least have something to eat and whatnot if you just got in. Uh, all right, what am I doing now? Let's uh, let's keep moving because I do want to do a little bit of work on the tank at some point, and I don't feel like spending an hour just going around the room feeding everybody. You got you you know what the fish in this tank look like. You've seen it before, and likewise with this one. But we'll have a little bit of a look. See what I mean about how this tank at the very least needs to be topped off? That's not supposed to be above the water like that. I mean, look, look at the gap we got in there. I can add an inch and a half of water to this tank. Look how green that is. All right, and I guess in this tank, let's throw some granules in there tonight, too. I just opened a new container of granules. I've got like three... Uh, big jars of it so we can go through some of them it's the damn sinking goldfish pellets that i've got so many of i don't know what to do with i literally have a bucket of them um and then i have four or three containers of it three big bottles of it uh i ordered the three big bottles 
and they didn't show up. And when they didn't show up, I went back and I saw the bucket for an even better price. And I was like, oh, shit, I'll just get that bucket. It'll last, a, you know, a year. Uh, and then after I got the bucket, like a week later, the three uh, containers that were supposed to have been here like weeks ago, they showed up out of nowhere. And so now I had the bucket and three big containers of it. So, yeah. <clears throat> 703B. Um, no, not really, Robert. I would just, when you do your water changes and you, you know, or you do your filter changes and you take it apart and everything, just wipe down the outside edge around where the O-ring is and wipe down the inside of the lip, you know, where it seals over the O-ring. Just make sure like just gunk builds up and, you know, crud. just take a damp paper towel and wipe it down. You shouldn't have to worry about it. Um, if you have hard water and you get hard water build up, maybe make sure none of that gets crusty around the O-ring. Um, but that's, you know, that's about all you're really going to have to worry about, I would think. All right. Hmm. I wonder why they like the purple leaves other than they have good taste and color. <laughs> I gotta be clearer than that, Zine. Oh, French bread pizza, nice. All right, well, we're not gonna be able to wait for uh, Sweet Acres anymore. We can see if they can guess later if they would like. But tonight, I was watching and listening to Ballet. Haha, -ha, I knew I threw you a curveball there. You weren't expecting that, were you? <laughs> um, so this is not a difficult ballet. It's a very popular ballet, and you may even be familiar with it. Uh, you all know Mozart is my favorite classical composer, but very high on my list of favorites is also uh, Tchaikovsky. And this is one of the three ballets that Tchaikovsky did. And it is probably the second most popular. So the, the ballet you're thinking of from Tchaikovsky, it's not that one. It's the other one. So see if you know what that one is. And if you need me to, I can play you a little snippet of it. See if you can recognize it from the uh, snippet. Yeah, I'd tear up some French bread pizza right now. <laughs> I didn't eat it. I thought about eating something before I started. I was like, nah, I don't want to have a big old bloated belly. I'm going to be all slim and trim looking. So I haven't eaten since this afternoon. I had like two mouthfuls of pulled pork and a protein drink. Yeah, I've always got my tanks new. And for the smaller tanks, like a 10-gallon, I mean, you can get a 10-gallon at the Walmart for like $13 or $14 or something. At least you used to be able to. They're probably 25 now. But you get into those larger size tanks, that price starts going up pretty quick when you buy new ones. I got Twinkle Toad. No, oh, because of ballet. <laughs> Johnny Best. Uh, the substrate in the tank you're looking at right now is um, Eco Complete. I have that in a lot of my tanks, but not all of them. I really like it. And hello, welcome aboard, by the way. Yeah, some of those old tanks, they have the. Um, uh, different glass than you can get today. They they have a completely different look to them. J. Eld, I guess that is. Hello and welcome aboard. I love 1812 Overture as well. I thought about listening to that tonight. I was not in, well, I wasn't in a bad mood, but I was in a shitty mood. And I don't know. It was a weird mood, but I was not going to be very fun <laughs> live stream tonight. And so I needed something to really just put me in a very chill mood. And so uh, I didn't, I was listening to uh, Boris Breccia. Um, and then I thought about listening to Flight of the Valkyries, you know, 1812 Overture, something, you know, just like pounding drums and explosions and shit. And I decided I didn't even want to do that. And so I went for super chill. Um, 
So if you know anything about Tchaikovsky's ballets, uh, it should be a pretty easy one for you. Five or six kayaks. Nice. I'm going to have to buy a new truck soon. I got my wheel bearing done today. It was $800. And they told me, this is, I'll tell you how I know I've got an amazing mechanic, an awesome mechanic. I love them. Um, they quoted me. I have one of them stupid fucking trucks that like everything on it's more expensive than a normal version of it. And so it was going to be an $800 bearing job. Uh, because you don't have regular press on, press off bearings. You got these weird bearings, blah, blah, blah. Well, when they got in there today, apparently I've got even weirder than that. Um, she was explaining it. There's some knuckle joint they had to disassemble and it was all rusted and the bolts broke and it took them hours to get in there, et cetera, et cetera. And so she said, I, you know, I quoted you the 800, you know, it was like $809 or something total. Uh, no, 790 was the total. Um, she said, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to charge you what I quoted you, but she said, I just want you to know that if you bring it back in for the other one, you know, this is my left rear. So if, I, you know, if my right rear goes out and you bring it in again, she said, it's going to be a few hundred dollars more than what you paid today. I was like, all right. Um, so that's, she said, I mean, that's like $1,100 for a fucking wheel bearing. Like how can a wheel bearing be that expensive? So if my name, if I, if I start hearing the wheel bearing go bad again, I'm that's it. I'm done with that truck. I'm not going to replace that with another wheel bearing for eleven hundred dollars. <laughs> that's ridiculous. <clears throat> so, like I said, pretty soon I'm gonna I'm gonna put some tags on that truck to just say Theseus. <laughs> I'm dri I'm definitely driving the truck to Theseus. I don't think there's an original part left on that truck except like the frame and the body and all that stuff. All right. Yeah, I really like the Eco Complete. I got the Eco Complete sand, and I was not a huge fan of it just because I don't like sand. I do like the Eco Complete sand as far as sand goes, um, uh, but like Anakin, I don't like sand. Well, no, I'm sorry. I hate sand. That's what I was supposed to say. Uh, let's see. My the, the Eco Complete's not synthetic. The uh, Eco Complete's made out of volcanic stuff, so it's got all the nutrients and minerals and uh, all that stuff. And it very, very, very slowly it never wears out because it's made of that stuff. And so as it literally dissolves and slowly leaches out over the years, you're getting your trace nutrients and stuff uh, for your plants. It's literally like the plants are growing in volcanic soil. So uh, nothing synthetic about the Eco Complete. It's good stuff. If I read that correctly, I might be misunderstanding your comment there. Is that Miss Shamu popping aboard? Shamu, there you are, my son. <laughs> yeah, I hate sands. All right, and we all know what Father Fish can do. All right, let's move on to the next tank, everybody. Let's keep this show rolling. Pretty soon you'll get to see my jolly face. I guess I can go throw a hose somewhere while you guys watch some food happen. No guesses on my musical choices. Anybody Googling it yet? <laughs> not a lot of big ballet fans out there. If you're not a ballet fan, you should be. You don't know what you're missing. You get the pleasure of listening to a full orchestra perform basically a symphony or something similar and all the while you get to watch a stage full of the most amazing bodies you'll ever see you do some of the most amazing things you'll ever see the hell's how can anybody not want to do that i don't 
care for the eco complete red all that much i could see how that would work in certain uh substrate or or in certain um scapes um but i don't know i just i don't know it doesn't look natural enough to me and that's just around here i don't there's nowhere ever where i go where the ground is really particularly reddish looking um we don't get like red clay or anything around here really so um i guess we don't get too much black stuff either i guess now i'm thinking about it Stratum. Are you good? Are you good? How are you doing? Uh, I think the golden vampire plecos get a seven to nine inches somewhere in there. Oh, it's got to be bigger than 10 centimeters. 10 centimeters is only about four inches. Well, I can Google it here easy enough for you. You guys hang on for a minute, and I will see what it says. Golden Vampire Pleco. Let's see. I've had two of those recently, but they both died on me. Uh, let's see. Let's just type in size and see what it says. There it is right there. Uh, about eight inches. Yeah, that's what I thought. Somewhere between seven and nine. So you can't get any more between seven and nine than eight. And you know, <laughs> uh, what, what was the joke? Right. You know why six was afraid of seven because seven, eight, nine. Your crypt is not making any new leaflets. My crypt grows like mad in this tank. Yeah, let me get my screen back so I can see what you're looking at. I'm looking at my golden vampire pleco. Yeah, so my uh, my crypt grows like mad. Uh, did you just transplant it or just do something with it? Because a lot of times it takes a while to go through sort of a transplant shock. Um, it might take some time to acclimate to more or less lighting compared to where it was before you got it. Um, sometimes it takes a little time for that to sort out and really start, you know, doing its thing. All right, we're going to throw some Vibra Bites in here. And we should see the uh, Striped Raphael come popping out of his cave there and swimming around here momentarily. I'm also going to feed the... 29 while we're standing here the tanks difficult to look at now i threw some small snails in for butter bean earlier and now that i'm looking at him it actually looks like he's down on the bottom of the tank hunting around for him um no real uh improvement but he doesn't seem to be any worse either i still keep giving him the um shrimp and i keep cutting it up for him and he seems to be able to eat it well enough and he just picked up a little snail off the bottom and he's crunching it up so i mean he is still down there you know chewing on them so that's good i threw a bunch of small snails in there today so i'm actually not going i was going to cut up some more shrimp for him but i'm actually not going to if he's down there picking small snails off the bottom i'm going to let him keep doing that and maybe he'll wear his teeth back down a little but again like i said until i really have to do surgery on him i'm not going to and so far, he's still got a fat round belly. It's nice and white. He seems healthy enough, but uh, he definitely, his teeth are definitely a little on the long side, and he definitely struggles to eat a little bit. So we will, uh, we'll see. All right, where was, uh, there I was. <clears throat> Didn't get a stop sign from anybody. Oh, a 13 gallon tank's definitely going to be too small. Yeah, it's going to get that's going to be a solid eight inch fish. Uh, and remember, when a pleco is eight inches long, uh, like the, the bulkiness of a body, uh, it, it's a bulky fish. It's not a long, slender fish. You know, it's not going to be a thin eight inches. It's going to be a thick, bulky eight inches long. Um, <clears throat> Think of the uh, striped Raphael you're looking at in there. It's going to be something approaching that size when it's full grown. 
So, you know, uh, a 13 gallon tank is definitely not going to be big enough. Uh, I would say probably a 55 would be minimum. Now you'll get a little bit of time out of it. You could keep it in that tank for, you know, six months maybe, but as it grows, it's going to outgrow that tank pretty quickly. I think. 2000 subs that week alone. Nice. Uh, that is fantastic, Sally. And I've gained like 200 a month and you're gaining 2000 in a week. That's sweet. Jacqueline, how are you? Thumbnail got your attention. Nice. I'm about ready to do a hit as I stand here and speak. Nice, Jay. You got it. It is Swan Lake. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you Googled it or not. I don't care as long as somebody got it right. I'm always happy when somebody gets it right. I was indeed watching Swan Lake this evening. It had the desired effect, too. It pulled me out of my funk and got me all calmed down. Oh, Moss. I got Java Moss. Well, I hope you enjoy yourself, uh, Jacqueline. Is it Jacqueline or Jacqueline? I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Of course, I asked you to give you both options. I don't know how you're going to tell me uh, which one is which, but you do your best. Uh, is it number one would be Jacqueline or number two would be a Jacqueline uh, or you can throw a third choice out there if I'm getting it wrong completely. Uh, Raphael's talk, they, uh, they're like a croaking catfish. Most, most catfish can make some kind of noise. No, transfer and cycled water uh, doesn't really work. Uh, the, the, the stuff you need isn't in the water. So transferring the cycled water. Um, <clears throat> oh, like the First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy. All right, got you. Um, so if you've got a 13-gallon tank and you're going to upgrade to a bigger tank, you could put it in the 13-gallon tank. It could live in there uh, for a while. But again, I would recommend at least a 55 if you want the, the vampire plucker to stay in there. And, you know, you'll have plenty of time to let that cycle while it's growing out. Silver Creeks, how are you? What do you mean they're dumb now, Shamu? They've always been dumb. <laughs> I was having fun with it, Jacqueline. Cecil, hello and welcome aboard. All right, somebody can stop sign me right there. Um, let us continue on. We're going to feed uh, Gilgalad and company now. He's in there somewhere. I just saw him a minute ago. Uh, Gilgalad is my betta fish, and they are going to get some viber bites tonight. And I got a bunch of guppies and uh, ember tetras in there. I got a banjo catfish on the bottom somewhere. Uh, he's making his way over now. Come on, buddy, you can do it. He's in there. Now, I don't know why he doesn't swim down. He's he's not very smart. He's a fish. Um, but he does never swim down and then like under all the plants and then come back up. He just shoves his way through everything. And since he's a betta fish with all those long flowy fins, he doesn't make very good time as he makes his way through the water. Uh, he's over here somewhere. I saw him a minute ago through all this crap where he's in there somewhere. Come on, buddy. Where are you? I can't feed you if you don't come out. Well, now I don't even see him. Oh, good grief. He's all the way over on the other side of the tank. All right, let's feed these guys here. If I can get all the food to go through the stupid duckweed and Java. I mean, uh, water sprite. So, 
let's let me see. Are you going to come over here, buddy? Oh, now he's making his way over. Now he knows there's food in the tank. He's coming. Hang on, everybody. He's making his way. Come on, buddy. You can do it. He's so close. He's right behind the Rotala. There he is. So you can see with fins like that, it ain't easy making his way through the jungle. <laughs> but he got there in the end. All right. I am going to do a dab right after I get caught up. Make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, let's see. Your scuds ate all the moss and left the stems only. Wow, that's you must have a lot of scuds because when I get Java moss going, it gets going. Um, you could do um, a bristle nose. You could do a rubber lip pleco. You could do a clown pleco. Um, a true zebra pleco. They're like $500, but they only get about four inches long. There's a bunch of them out there. You got to look around, um, but be really careful. Double check multiple places. I've, I see wrong information all the time. So if you see a pleco that says it only gets three or four inches, look a couple other sources. And, and if they all agree, you know, or, or if they're all within, you know, a narrow window, then say, all right, you know, uh, maybe that's a little better. Um, but don't just take someone, some single person's word for it um, if you're not familiar with the fish because there's a lot of bad information out there floating around. Oh, gee, Shamu, are you, you're, you finally, like every time you walk away, they bring you back. I thought you finally got away from your sharks. What are you doing? <laughs> All right. Branton Lightcap, Hello. I like the clowns too. Clown plecos are only ten dollars or ten pounds. Yeah, um, yeah, the clown plecos aren't very expensive. The the true zebras. Now I have some chocolate zebra plecos. In fact, you see that tail sticking out right there? That's a chocolate zebra pleco. And that fish is probably oh geez, it's probably pushing 10 years old now. I've had that one. I got three of them in here. Well, is there still three or two? I started with four. One died. <clears throat> excuse me. One died within a, a couple of months of getting them. And then so I had three in this tank for the longest time. And now I think I am actually down to two. I think one of them did die. Um, I lose track of all the damn fish I've got. Uh, but I'm pretty sure I've got at least two left in there. Um, and again, that that's at least pushing 10 years old if it's not actually 10 years old it's pretty damn close uh so they don't get too big that one's still big enough that it could live in a 13 gallon tank all right so we're just hitting on my regular tonight that's my homemade hash oil that's my wicked space we were just hitting on this the other night uh this is actually a fresh batch though i just made this uh yesterday afternoon and I'm working my way through that. When we're done with this, we will be making uh, my next batch will be uh, my beloved Hawaiian puff. So if you join me on Sunday, we will be puffing on some of that. Pun intended. And it was a friggin' hilarious one. All right, everybody. Let's get the show on the road. I did a couple of bong hits when we got started, but they barely counted. That's that homegrown stuff. Uh, my neighbor gave me some stuff he got from a buddy of his. And uh, not only was it homegrown, it was outdoor grown. Because I do homegrown, and that you get some good shit when you grow it yourself, if you know what you're doing. Um, but growing it outside, there's only so much you can do, you know. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, 
All right, let us feed the discus tank. We'll be sitting in front of this one here in a little while, so you'll get to enjoy that uh, as much as you want. But in a minute, I mean, for the moment, <laughs> not in a minute, for the moment, uh, we're just going to go ahead and feed this, uh, and then we'll do a little bit of work on the 125, and we can hang out and bullshit a little bit while the 125 is draining and filling. <laughs> Excuse me. And when we're done that, uh, I will be copping a squat right here in front of this very tank and uh, holding court. So I'll answer questions, chit chat, tell stories. I don't know. You get me going. I'll talk about whatever. All right. Got to feed the Tenopoma and he eats the floating cichlid pellets. So let's get some of them in here for him. And there he goes. He's going to get his nummies. Nom, 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 nom. Um, Nutcracker is not my favorite necessarily. Uh, hang on. I'll get to Let me get caught up. Let me get back to my stop sign here somewhere, wherever it was. I'm sure somebody gave me one somewhere. I hope somebody gave me one. Oh, I didn't get one. Where was I now? Not into corpses. What the hell did I miss? Yeah, Shamu, between the, the common plecos that get sold for people that have 10-gallon tanks and the, uh, the Chinese algae eaters that get sold to people that have 10-gallon tanks... Two new shrimp tanks. Nice. Because the Chinese algae eaters, they get pretty damn big too. He was sad in the 20. I don't know why. Yeah, I figured you meant scaping there, uh, Branton. Talk, who talked you into what there, Laura? Now I'm confused. Am I missing something here tonight? <laughs> I usually feel like I'm on the ball and I can keep up with everybody. I don't know what the hell's going on tonight here. Yeah, most of my placos stay hidden most of the time. I just go by the name that people post. I know his name is Brandon, but if he wants to post it as Shamu, that's what I'm going to call him, damn it. If he wants me to call him Brandon, he either needs to specifically ask me or put his name on the screen that way. Oh, there you go, Shirley. Good. Glad to hear it. I was wondering about that. 808 Beast Playground. Nice. Happy Aloha Friday to you. Now, I keep whirly gigging. I hope you guys aren't uh, whirly gigging on your end. I hope that's just my stupid tablet. Hey, Direwolf. Oh, everybody wants to get their hands on some nice big wood, Shamu. Oh, it was Swan Lake my favorite. Um, I I don't really have a favorite ballet, to be honest with you. I'm not a huge ballet guy. Um, but let me get caught up here. We'll talk about it. I don't mind talking about ballet. I'm going to convince at least one of you people out there it's worth watching because it's awesome. I'll watch ballet rather than watch stupid sports ball. Oh, you were fussing on the Hunger Games. No wonder I don't know what the hell you're talking about. You had a shitty night Wednesday. Oh, no. Heater malfunction. They killed the whole tank. Oh, man, that sucks. Oh, I got you there, Laura. Well, you should be sitting down and hanging out. It's Friday night. This is what we do. 
anchor worms and a bunch of your other fish. Good grief, show. That is a pretty fucking crappy night. I was thinking you meant you had a crappy night on the members chat live stream. I was thinking it wasn't so bad. <laughs> I had a good time. <laughs> Another heater malfunctioning. Well, that super duper sucks. Good grief. You are uh, competing with Janice to hit, see who can have a worse string or worse luck. Although I got to say, I'll take your problems over Janice's any day. All right. Somebody can stop signing me if you would please. I'm just busting your chops. Uh, Laura, you know, I, I do whatever you got to do. I'm not sure going to stop you from doing that. All right. What do we need to do? We need to get some work done in the other 125, Daryl. Uh, so I can do that while you're doing this. Let me just go grab the hose out of the other room, uh, real quickly. <clears throat> and we will do the big ass water change because why not? So I'm going to take the time to bring a hose in there and stick it in the tank. I may as well just fuck off for half an hour while water drains and then fuck off for another 20 minutes while it fills back up, you know? So let's get the hose in there and then let me get the calm down, everybody. We've been through this before. It's not your first rodeo. Uh, let me shut the filter down. I don't, ah, oh, geez, that was a squeaky loud squeak. All right, filter is shut down. We don't want to have a vapor lock like we did in that stupid. <laughs> Calm down, everybody. You've had water changes before. You know the drill here. This is not scary or shouldn't be. Jeez, fish. That's drama queens. Uh, all right, let me go flip the old switch and get it draining. Actually, I don't flip the switch. I take the hose off of the sink. Uh, because the sink is uh, roughly waist height. And when you're doing a siphon, as you probably realize, the lower you get the hose and the more gravity you've got pulling that water down, uh, the faster it drains. And so I got a uh, stand up walk in shower in the, in the bathroom here. So I basically just lay the hose on the floor at the drain. And I drain it down in the shower and uh, it drains a lot faster that way than if I was just doing it. Um, you know, at the sink height, three feet in the air. So, all right, let me cop squat here. Sit down for a while because we got some time to kill while we let that drain. Let me turn some light on because I am ready to have some smoke. In fact, I'm going to go get my oil rig. Oh, let me have some coffee while I'm in here. It's hot. I must have been hot as shit earlier. Ugh, all right, I just sat down in a bunch of water. Oh, well, I'll deal with it. All right, everybody, let me get a nice little dab of this dabbed up. using a different dab tool than I normally do. I forgot to bring my dab tools in, so I'm just going to use this one. <laughs> so I feel like walking back in the other room again. Uh, I guess you can see the size of that. It's pretty good gooey dab. And you can see how it pulled a little peak that's going to sit there for 20 minutes as it slowly falls over. Oof! I also brought in my magic box with a little bit of that homegrown weed stuff in there. So, again, I do have glam during my weed hammer. But we'll see. All right, so this is what we're going to be doing my dab out of. I didn't even put any uh, algae wafers in there, and they're already fighting. I guess the uh, um, stuff goes to the bottom. The vibrobites go to the bottom.
I definitely wasted that one to taste it. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's still got uh, vapor in there coming out. I didn't get it hot enough, though. So I got a nice hit. It's just I wasted a little bit of my stuff. So, oh, well. <coughs> I got plenty. All right. I tell to my nose. Now I'm going to sneeze. Let me find my tablet that I left sitting up there. Yeah, we definitely got some Discus Fight Club going on, but I did not uh, did not put any algae wafers in there. All right. Excuse me. All right. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, Laura. Earwax? No, it's definitely not earwax. I did. I don't know why I thought you were uh, Gabrielle instead of Gabriel. I, I have no idea why. It just That's the way I read it when I first saw it. Well, just like Jacqueline, I saw it in, in my mind. I, I It was French. I just assumed it was somebody from France. Uh, I saw Jacqueline or, or something similar that I probably wasn't pronouncing correctly. <laughs> I don't know why that is. It's weird. Uh, everybody's waiting for me to fall into that pond, Shirley. Oh, you're in Florida. All right. Well, that's definitely not France. It's come close a couple times. Tokens of homegrown blueberry delight. Nice. Well, I'm in Maryland. Um, well, 808, not only do I listen to uh, 808 State on a fairly regular basis because I listen to a lot of electronic music. I don't know if you listen to electronic music, uh, but I don't, I'm assuming, is 808 the area code or something down there or the, the exchange on the phone or something? Because there's an electronic band called 808 State, and I thought it had something to do with Hawaii, but I'm not sure. Um. But my favorite weed that I'm growing is, and I've, I've been growing it for years and years, is Hawaiian Puff. It's just amazing. It's the best weed ever. <laughs> and that's what we'll be having. In fact, I'll show you what I got going right now that I just cut down uh, today. This is all from that one little plant. So this is actually, no, I'm lying to you. This is a uh, wicked space. I just cut down this wicked space and there's some more of it that I didn't hang up, but it's sitting in there hanging. That's the wicked space. So this is my Hawaiian puff. This has been curing for a little while. It's not quite cured yet, but I need it. So whether it's cured or not, it's getting made into some goo. So that'll be my project. Uh, probably Sunday, maybe Monday, I'll be making this into some goo. And that's all I've got right now. I'm still waiting you know, for that to dry. And then I got some other stuff in the works, but that's all I got for the moment. <clears throat> but soon I finally figured out my issues. I got on top of all my problems. Everything's growing again. Everything's green again. It's just basically, I'm just waiting at this point because when you garden, whether it's indoors or out, uh, you are at the, 
you know, the, the time schedule that the plants are on. I can't make them do their thing faster. I can't make them grow faster. I can't make them get taller. Uh, I just have to wait. And that's where I am at this point. Like I said, I've worked out all my issues. They're, they're green, they're lush, they're growing again. Uh, I just have to get them bigger than this. I've been flowering plants a foot tall for the last six months. Um, you know, I need to get something more like three feet tall uh, and then we'll be cooking with gas. Um, right now, I just I'm, I got enough to get me through, basically, but pretty soon I'll have enough to have some excess. And then we'll be rolling around naked in it. But again, that'll be on my only Dan's channel. You have to uh, sign up. You guys don't get that for free. Lynchburg, Virginia. Nice. That's not too far from me. I am an emotional man too, Zine. My emotions are all over the place. That has to do with my ADHD, though, I found out. It's the area code. Okay. That makes sense then. Do you know the band 808 State? I think it's that's the name of the band. So I'm in touch with my emotions. <laughs> it's hard to keep track of them all, but they're there. I'm, I'm aware of them. And like Zine, I wear mine on my sleeve. You don't have to try too hard to guess what kind of mood I'm in. <clears throat> all right. Somebody can stop sign me there. And I'm going to do another day. We got plenty of time to, uh, let me turn this light off. Too. It's obnoxious and unnecessary. I mean, you can see we've only, oh, I'm crushing your head, I'm crushing your head. I could crush the fish's head. Oh, I'm crushing the fish, I'm crushing the fish. Um, you can see we've only done a little tiny bit of water change so far. Uh, we got plenty of time to wait. Uh, do I want to do a bone hit of that? No, I don't. I'm just going to do my regular straw because this is the best way of doing it. It's the easiest. It's the fastest. I get the biggest hits and it makes me cough the least at all the different ways I smoke. So this is just the way to go. Oh, I'm happy to say I picked up a new customer at work, too. I was supposed to see them today, but my truck took an extra day to fix. Uh, so I had to postpone till Monday. But Monday, I start spraying a new customer's property. You know, there's probably a lot of people out there whose two favorite things are smoking weed and looking at the fish. I always imagine that my live stream will get more and more popular week after week as more and more people discover it, but it never does. It always just hovers <laughs> around the same amount of people, which is fine. Um, you, you would just think by now, I've been doing this for a couple of years, uh, <coughs> more people would be tuning in, but they don't. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, all we're going to do on the 125 is once the water level's down a little bit, I'm going to wipe the glass down and we're going to fill it back up. So again, it's just a waiting game at this point. We're just letting the water uh, drain. So give me a minute. I'll get caught up on the comments. So uh, remember, I'm here for you. I, if you got questions or you got, you know, need information or whatever, that's why I'm here. I can smoke weed and hang out and do water changes. Uh, and all that stuff at the same time. So if you got any questions, feel free to ask them. They could be weed related, they could be fish related, or whatever, as long as it's uh, you know within reason. Uh, so fire away, whatever. Good stuff. I want to top this off too. Uh, I spray deer repellent on uh, landscape plants and flower gardens. 
<coughs> Excuse me. All right, where am I? Let me get caught up somewhere. I'm back here. There's got to be a stop sign somewhere. Nope, another not stop sign. Come on, Laura. What are you doing to me? Oh, there's the stop sign. Never mind. I apologize, Laura. <laughs> I rolled right past your stop sign. I didn't even see it. That was totally my fault. Inside and outside. Interesting. I tried growing outside once, but even taking the planter and moving it around throughout the day to try to keep it in whatever little bit of sun we get. And it's just, it's crap. I did better with fluorescent lighting. I was using those big ass 300 watt curly Q fluorescents, um, like not 300 watt equivalent, but actual 300 watt draw, big, big lights. Um, I was, it was, they were still fluorescent though. Excuse me. I was doing better with those than I did when I tried to grow it outside. And of course, back then it was illegal as shit. And I thought, why risk it? Why have plants outside if I'm doing it inside when the plants inside grow better anyway? And so I gave up growing uh, outside years ago. Um, but I'm, it's legal now. I'm allowed to grow it. And so I can openly talk about it. But I've been growing it for 18 years. 2007, I started growing it. And I never looked back. Yeah, I guess who just joined us. I'm thinking about getting a Toyota Tacoma. That's probably going to be the next thing I get. Um, but yes, I spray deer repellent. I work for myself. Oh, let's see. You didn't even start smoking weed. You were over 18. Wow. Well, no, I don't spray coyote piss. Um, where I spray, see, that's a that's a common mis, uh, misunderstanding or a common belief. Uh, people think that if you spray like coyote urine uh, or something like that. Now, out where I live, there are a few coyote that have started moving back into the area. But where I spray my deer repellent, a uh, much, much more urban area than this. The deer in those areas have never smelled coyote. They don't know what a fucking coyote is. They wouldn't know what coyote piss was if you splashed it on their face. So it's that doesn't work. That only works where coyotes actively prey on the deer. Um, so, yeah, no, I don't use the coyote stuff. Yeah. Got two stop signs. I missed the second one, too. Man, I'm having a rough night tonight. There you go, Janice. <laughs> Can't <laughs> give me something that my eyeballs crash into. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I definitely won't miss that. All right, we still got time to kill. So... Anything on anybody's mind? I know I threw that out there once, but I'm going to throw it out there again. Uh, let me see if there's anything I can ramble on or chat about that's not inappropriate. Again, I listened to Swan Lake earlier for the very purposes of driving what I wanted to talk about out of my head. So we're not going to talk about that. I'm going to stick with my original judgment. Um No, nah, nah, that wouldn't work either because that would tie right back into what I don't want to talk about. <laughs> so we can't go down that road. I got a, a I'm familiar enough with my own uh, uh, stream of consciousness and where it can go. But even though a particular topic may be safe. All I got to do is think about it for a minute. And I'm like, nope, I can see where that's going. Like, that's not go down that road because down that's I know it's down the corner uh, a little ways, but we'll get there eventually. And I don't want to go there. 
So let's not go down that road either. So I don't know what to talk about tonight. I'm afraid to say too much because you never know where my mouth might lead me. <coughs> Excuse me. Shamir, you don't want to talk politics. You'd be so far out of your league, you wouldn't know what hit you. Kendra, how are you doing this evening? I'm just thinking about you today. I do keep rubber lip plecos. I have some. They are. I like uh, rubber lip plecos. In fact, uh, they are one of the fish that I always say is a fish that I would keep just for the sake of keeping it as a fish, because I like plecos, and those are nice small plecos, and they're really cool-looking little plecos. They, they really are. I've always enjoyed those. And bonus, they do a great job of keeping your tank nice and clean. So uh, I recommend keeping the rubber lips just for the sake of having the rubber lip plecos in there. I think they're really cool little fish. Kendra, thank you very much. Um... I would be happy to talk about the discus tank behind me, Robert. Uh, and welcome aboard, by the way. I hope you enjoy yourself while you're hanging out. Um, hey, Gordaki, how are you doing? Uh, can we talk about the difference between washing your car in your driveway... And the stuff you spray and the weed killer, bug killer, people spray. I don't know what you are talking about, Laura. Heavy, hey. <laughs> I'm not, I don't like, I, I, I think I might know what you're talking about. Are you saying that when you wash your car in the driveway, all that runoff go? Like, what's the difference between that and all the runoff that's polluting the natural water sources versus, like, the difference between when you spray out in your yard and that soaks into the ground? Like, is that what you're asking? Uh, exactly, Robert. Your eyes do not deceive you. In fact, I... I stopped preaching about it long ago because for various reasons I'm not going to get into now. I just quite honestly stopped giving a shit. But I was on a mission for a while to convince people uh, that discus are fish. They're not these special magical things that are made out of fairy dust that everybody talks about. They're fish. And they function just like fish. I've had the nitrate in this tank. Um, over a hundred parts per million before the, you can see the mom that's all over the ground. In fact, we need to get in here and do uh, a water change, but I've got um, a issue with some cyanobacteria going on right now. You can see this really bright green stuff. So we're treating it with the chemi clean and you can see how it's given me some sort of sudsiness, a little bit of foamy bubbles. So that lets me know that the chemi clean is still in there doing its thing. And you can see the, you know, the cyanobacteria and stuff down here a little bit. But when you start looking in here, you can see just these piles of mulm. Uh, down here, this end has loads of mulm in it. Look, you can see the roots from my red tiger lotus coming through the glass. Uh, if you could, if I could get all that stupid glare off it, let me try standing in front of it. Uh, I guess you can see those roots in the dirt. But all of this, this is the soil line. All that from here up, that's all just mulm and just crud. If we stirred that up, it would look like a freaking snowstorm <laughs> uh, of brown in this tank. They're in there with plants. They're in there with other fish. Uh, my tanapoma often chases the discus around the tank just because he can be a dick sometimes. I honestly think he just gets bored uh, and just for something to do, he just chases the fish around just to be a dick. Um, but you can see the discus are quite fine and healthy. Uh, I only lost one discus in that tank, and that was due to bullying, not water conditions or anything. And I did have a second discus that was being bullied, and we moved that one here. I'll show that to you since you haven't seen it yet. Um, this tank, likewise, is not what you might call pristine. Uh, but if you'll notice down there hiding in the weeds is my other lone discus. 
And the reason he's in this tank is after the other one died, uh, my first mistake was once again, I listened to, and I'm making huge air quotes here, discus keepers, uh, the kind of people that don't consider themselves fish keepers. They think of themselves as discus keepers. I listened to all those people and they kept insisting that my discus was sick and I was medicating it and doing all this other stupid stuff. And what was going on was it was being bullied. And I just didn't pick up on it. I, I listened to other people instead of using my own eyeballs. And eventually it died. And immediately following it, this one started looking the same way, you know. And by then I realized what was going on. So I moved this one out and I put it in this tank. And it immediately started looking better. And now you can see it looks just happy as can be because swimming in between uh, you know, plants like this, this is their natural behavior. This is what they would do in the wild. That's why they're so wafer thin. Uh, it's so they can get between all of the plant leaves and roots and all that kind of stuff. Um, they're bottom feeders. Uh, they feed on like flooded forest floors. They're again, they're, they're, I don't know the, the reason I don't, why people treat them like they're, they're made out of magic and you can't, uh, expose them to nitrate or you can't expose them to other, uh, tank mates or et cetera, et cetera. Uh, maybe 30 years ago, that was the case, but that is certainly not the case now. Um, they're very durable fish. If you can, if you've got the fish keeping skill to keep, um, and we can test the nitrate in the tank if you want, I'm not going to do it unless you, you know, specifically want me to. Um, but if you've got the skill, watch out, watch out. Uh, if you've got the skill to keep uh, angelfish or rainbow fish, then you can keep discus. They're, they're not difficult to keep. They need a fairly large tank and they're expensive to buy even when you buy them online. Um, but if you got the room and the money, get them. They're not hard to keep. All right, let me see where I was. There I was. Kendra, thank you once again. Oh, let's see. Wetlands are super important. It's illegal to wash your car in your town because of runoff. Hmm, that's interesting. I've never heard of that. Missouri city ordinance, they are getting crazy. Well, it depends. If it was having an impact, then I can see doing it. It depends on where it runs off into. I would need a hell of a lot more information than just that. I, that's why I said I'm, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, yeah, TK, that's what these are, uh, 125. That's a 55 that you saw the other one in with all that frigging crypt going insane over there. Um, but that one is by itself. It's it's the other fish in the tank or tetras and, you know, smaller schooling fish or whatever. That's the only discus by itself. There's uh, eight discus in this tank. And I also uh, deliberately did not let them get really big. I didn't do the frequent water changes because if you do do, <laughs> I said do do, uh, if you do frequent water changes and you keep the nitrate really low and you keep the temperature really warm and you give them a lot of high protein, which does not include beef heart, uh, you can get them pretty good size. Most discus can get six, eight inches around. Uh, my biggest one at this point is probably a little more than six inches top to bottom. Uh, but they're also only two years old, so they are still going to grow uh, for the rest of their lives. But most of that rapid growth is over, and none of them are really big. And I didn't want them to be really big. If they got eight inches, it would just be too much fish for this tank, and I just didn't want that. Um, I didn't really expect to have so many discus. They were given to me as a gift. Um, and then when I liked them, I bought some more for myself. 
Um, but the guy that gave me the original batch as a gift, when I he I got them through him because he got a discount for me, got them through a buddy of his. And he sent me some extras that I wasn't expecting. And so how do you say like, dude, I didn't, I didn't want all these extra discus. I don't have room for them. You know, the dude gave me extra discus. So I just put them in the tank. And so we've got eight of them here. Uh, the one over there makes nine. And then the one that died from being bullied would be the 10th one. And that's, you know, I started with 10 uh, about two years ago. So my first cat out of the bag, I've never done discus before. Uh, and I'm two years in now and I haven't lost any, you know, due to my, um, you know, husbandry and they've been through some shit. I've had to medicate them a couple times. I've had a, uh, I had a big, um, Oh, what the hell fish was that? Snakeskin garami, about 10 inches long, maybe nine inches long died in the tank. And I just didn't notice it. It died in the bushes down at the other end of the tank and it was rotting away. It was nasty by the time I finally figured out what was going on. And because it was rotting away, the tank was coping. The tank was functioning but there was just so much bacterial load in the water that epistylus started growing and all the discus had white stuff growing all over them and the tank was a mess. Um, and it cleaned right up as soon as I got in there and started doing a water change. And I was like, what the hell is this? Oh, Jesus, God. <laughs> like it was this nasty, rotten, disgusting. Like the, the head was the only thing that was still solid enough to be picked up. If you know, the rest of it kind of went through my fingers. It was nasty. Um, and that's how I discovered my uh, snake singurami was missing. Uh, so they've been through that in this tank. And they all, there was one other thing that they went through. I had to medicate the tank. And I don't remember what it was now. Like I said, they've been in here for a couple of years now. Uh, but that was, you know, that, that was bad. I just, again... I lose track of my fish and I, I hadn't even noticed that my big snakeskin garami hadn't been seen in God, I don't know, a week or two at least. I mean, it was, it was well decomposed by the time I found it. And again, the only reason I found it was I noticed all the white shit growing all over the discus, which, you know, was the epistylus feeding on the excessive amounts of bacteria. Um, now, as soon as I saw that, I immediately said, all right, something's wrong. You know, and I didn't, I didn't think it was ick. I've, I learned the difference between those a long time ago. Um, but when I saw the epistylus growing, that was a clear indication that there's an explosion of bacteria in the tank. What's going on? Where's this bacteria coming from? And so I got in there and started rooting around and then yeah, I found where all that bacteria was coming from. Uh, ooh, that was nasty, but, uh, I found it and figured it out. So we got the tank cleaned up and the fish recovered almost immediately and uh, good to go again. So the discus are adorable. They're, they're tough little fish, I think. All right, where was I? Dude, if you want to send me 20 Denison barbs, I'll take them. <laughs> Well, yes, yeah, Shamu, if I can stop sign me too, please. Uh, we'll go do some work on the tank down there in a minute. Um, that's what really surprised me. First of all, I was not having an ammonia spike, which doesn't surprise me. Um, it wasn't until fairly recently I figured out it was ADHD, but I know how I am, and I know I forget to turn filters back on. I forget, you know, I forget to do a lot of stuff, and so I sort of dan proof my tanks. Uh, I put redundant systems in there. I put extra power heads for movement. Uh, I, I make sure I've got enough of a living bacterial culture within the tank itself that I'm not reliant on the filters bacterial load. So if I do forget to turn the filter off, and in fact, on this tank, I forgot to turn the filter on for weeks at a time, uh, and the tank functioned just fine on its own, just because I've got power heads and air stones, uh, the filter wasn't even running. And I've done that more times than I can count on various tanks and they all survive and they all do fine because I damn proof my tanks. I know me. I know what I'm going to do. If I don't do that, I will kill my tank. Um, and so my tanks are kind of set up the way they are for very specific reasons, but I was, I was honestly surprised when I checked for ammonia and there was no ammonia and I literally had a rotten nine or 10 inch 
um, you know, snakeskin gouramis are not small fish, and this thing was gross. It, I mean, it was it was mush. Uh, it was it was semi solid. <laughs> uh, by the time I got it, the only reason I could hold its head was because there was a skull bone uh, in there. Like the fleshiness was already gone. It was you get the idea. Um, no ammonia spike. It was dealing with that much organic waste being broken down. The tank was coping. It was dealing with that. And I couldn't smell it. There was now when I disturbed it and, and started bringing it up out of the water and the water swirled around, I smelled it then. Everybody, anybody that was in this basement smelled it at that point. Uh, but when it was just down there rotting away in the bottom, because it was all the way down in the end, and this was before I thinned out my uh, red tiger lotus, and that red tiger lotus used to be thick down at that end, and I had java fern growing with the tiger lotus, and it was like in that. It must have been one of them where it was like doing the corkscrews and went Gling! and like just got wedged down in the bottom under all those damn leaves and everything, and it was all just down there, and it was it was dealing with it. It, it there was no stink, there was no nothing. Um, again, I was stunned when I brought that thing up. I was like, holy shit. You know, I mean, it, it was rotten. I couldn't believe it didn't foul the tank. I couldn't believe I couldn't smell it. I couldn't believe I didn't have eight parts per million ammonia. Um, it, but it didn't, it dealt with it. I, eventually everything would have been fine if it wasn't for the, um, you know, the, the epistylus outbreak. And that's simply because of the uh, excessive bacteria in the water and uh, the epistylus feeds on the bacteria. And so when it attaches to the fish, it's not feeding on the fish. It's using the fish um, in the same way a barnacle would use a ship. Uh, it's just attaching itself to the fish and then it's feeding off the bacteria that's in the water column uh, as the fish swims around. It does do damage to the fish and over time uh, can injure or even kill the fish, but the epistylus itself is not so bad for the fish. It's the conditions that allow for that epistylus to be growing on the side of the fish. You've got a lot of bacteria in your water if that's happening. You know, um, which is what I meant when I said, you know, as soon as I saw it growing on the fish, I was like, oh, shit, something's bad. You know, there, there's there's a reason there's a shit tons of bacteria in the tank. And when I got in there, it was it was, you know, what we've already discussed. So, all right, let me get down here and uh, start doing some water, uh, wiping that glass down. Uh, the fish are starting to freak out. And that's what lets me know usually that we're getting nice and low on the water level. Now, remember, I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. I do my favorite size water changes, which are big ass water changes. And I do not recommend them just because I do them. This is definitely going to be a case of do as I say, not as I do. <clears throat> Excuse me, hang on. <clears throat> now, if you are familiar with your water, or even if you don't know any damn thing about your water, but you've done massive water changes plenty of times in the past and everything's been fine, fine. Don't worry about it. Um, if you're new or if you just have never done big water changes before, but you see that I'm doing them and say, well, shit, I'm going to do them too, you know, um, be careful. Again, I do not recommend doing that. It's, um, you can, alter your water chemistry pretty radically when you do a really, really big water change like that. I should have cut this one more time. And so if you're not really familiar with your water chemistry and you don't really know what's going to happen when you, you know, just I better safe than sorry. It's safer to do smaller water changes more frequently and we could have a whole long, long discussion on when to do water changes and why and all that kind of stuff. But if you are doing water changes and you're trying to do them on a regular basis and all that, uh, if you're not familiar with your water, it's, it's safer to do, you know, slightly more frequent, but smaller. Or if you are familiar with your water and you have water like mine that allows you to do the kinds of water changes I do, then go for it and do one once a month or whenever you feel like doing it and then do... My favorite size, big ass water changes. So we're just going to get this glass wiped down. And then once it's wiped down, we will 
fill it back up and that'll be it for tonight hopefully i won't bash my knuckles like i did last time i actually cut myself last time i bashed my knuckles so hard You can hear that noise. It's just the, uh, I got a couple of power heads in here and they're getting above the water surface and starting to suck air and rattle and stuff. It's nothing to be concerned about. Well, my giant Anubius collapsed. All right, we did all that with one little piece of that stuff. Let me go uh, reverse the water flow, and we'll call that good for that water change. Well, I mean, I'm, you know, when it's full, we'll call it good, but <laughs> we'll call that good for as far as how much we're going to drain out of it anyway. And as far as the temperature, I'm just familiar enough with my water. I've done these so many times. I kind of know where to turn the hot water dial to get it set to roughly the right temperature. Uh, you don't have to be super precise about it. You don't need to get it within one degree of, you know, the starting. I used to be really, really crazy about that. I'd run the water um you know in the sink and i'd run a thermometer and you know make sure i matched up the water temperature what was in the tank when i did the water changes um now i figure if i get it within eight degrees or something i'm i'm good <laughs> you know maybe if i get it within seven degrees six degrees i'm fine do you see that stupid cat lying on my water change hose he will do anything to get attention he's more of a ham than my stupid ham tank goldfish are what are you doing, you stupid cat? Do you want to say hi to everybody on the camera? Well, you're going to have to wait. All right, let me sit back down here. Cop my squat again now that we're refilling. Just got to remember to not overflow it. It's one thing when it's draining. It can only drain so far before the uh, water level gets down to the end of the hose and it breaks suction. But when it's filling, that's a different story. You got to pay attention. Uh more times than I'd like to admit, I have heard the merry tinkle uh, of cascading water uh, because I forgot I was uh, filling a tank. Again, ADHD is a bitch. Everybody always says like, oh, it's, you know, it's got its pros and cons and, you know, ADHD and its ways gives you superpowers. I have yet to anybody who explained to me what the fuck these superpowers I'm supposed to have are. <laughs> what makes it so great? And every time, the more I think about it, the more I learn about it, the more I realize how much it sucks. Uh, it really is a uh, like a, a disability. It, it's a it's a learning disability. It's killing me now. The more I learn about it, so I don't know. Like I said, one of these days maybe I'll go to my doctor and talk about it. Just gotten used to my life being like this after all these years, though. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. Let me see where I was. Lena, I believe I saw you popping in. I'll say hello. There we were. <coughs> yeah, TK, like I said, I, I gave up a long ago about being adversarial with the discus keeping community and all that. Um, I'll just say they know how I feel about them. Hey, how are you? Six ads since 8 p.m. That's not too bad. I think it does one every 20 minutes. There you are, Selena. Hello. <coughs> well, I know TV recently upped the 
uh, amount of ads in an hour. Uh, it used to be something like 13 minutes of the hour was ads. Now it's uh, 17 and a half minutes or something like that. Um, so your hour long show is now like 41 minutes or something is the whole entire show. Uh, I was listening to something the other day and it was, it was uh, people that were talking about writing and writing shows and how they have to write differently now because they have, you know, they have to account for all the commercial breaks when they're writing the show. And, you know, they don't write an hour show and then add commercials, you know, they write for the space allotted. And so they had to change the way they were writing for shows because they're adding more commercials now. Art night, yay. Oh, let me see. Uh, if it's just one spot, I wouldn't worry too much about it. What does it look like? Is it fuzzy or is it just a white dot? Um, I, you know, if it's a dot, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Just keep an eye on it. If it, if it grows or if the, you start seeing more or something, then I might be a little concerned. <clears throat> all right. So I'm all caught up again. Hi, there you are. Good morning. Uh, that's exactly what I was going to say, Selena. It's not unusual for fish to have little uh, marks and scrapes and stuff like that on them because they bang into things or whatever. So again, if it's just one little mark, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Keep an eye on it. Make sure it doesn't spread. Uh, make sure it doesn't get fuzzy looking. Uh, if it does start to get fuzzy looking, you can maybe put some, um, you know, um, uh, broad broad spectrum antibiotic in the tank, maybe. Um, it probably wouldn't be fungal necessarily, but I, again, just keep an eye on it. If it's just a little speck, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. Uh, more often than not, that stuff either goes away or it simply becomes a permanent part of the fish. And it's just always going to have a little white scrape mark on its head from now on. And that's just what it's going to look like. So I wouldn't worry about it. I think you'd be fine. All right. I got to remember, uh, not to overflow. Um, I guess we can have a look at Butterbean, too. Does anybody want to have a look at Butterbean? We haven't seen him in a while. Uh, we will not be zooming in on him. We'll just be kind of looking at him because he is still hunting down around the bottom of the tank. I'm going to find a few more small snails to throw in there, actually, uh, while we wait for the tank back there to fill up. So we're clearly going to go, well, I don't know. It might be finished by 10 o'clock. Um but I don't have to be done by 10 o'clock necessarily tonight. If anybody wants to do a little overtime, we can hang out for a while. All right, let me strike while the titanium is hot. Shit, at the rate I'm going tomorrow is when I'm going to be making that Hawaiian puff into some new uh, hash oil. I gotta stop talking. My hits out. <clears throat> You'd think I just started doing this. Come here. You wanna say hi to everybody? Come here. Get up. <coughs> I'm gonna stand here and cough for a few minutes while you look at Squeaker. Oh, that one was rough. That was a big hit. And then I talked it out like a dumbass. <coughs> you ready to show everybody your tooties?
Oh, thanks, uh, Eyeball. I finally charged the batteries up. All right, show everybody your tooties. No, there's his tooties. Look at that big old tootie. Look at him looking at me. You love your daddy, don't you? I see you. I see you. Be nice. Don't bite. What did I just tell you? I do this all the time. All right. No, don't do that. Stop it. He's dancing. All right. That was Butterbean. I mean, uh, that was Squeaker, everybody. Now we'll look at Butterbean. Uh, he's around back right now. He's coming up, making his way up front. So let me go find, actually, let me turn his other light, his forward light on, so you can see him a little more clearly. <coughs> I'm so close to getting all this coughed out of me. And so now he knows food's coming in. Uh, let me just go ahead and chop him up some of his uh, floating food, because that's clearly what he's waiting for. I grabbed all the smaller snails that I saw already. So this is what I do. I take his a uh, couple of pieces of krill, a couple of pieces of shrimp. And then I take the scissors over here, which usually live over here. And then I just cut that into little pieces. So if you're wondering what all this is about, uh, his teeth have gotten a bit long and he can't open his mouth as far as he used to. And I'm trying to prevent having to do the whole put him to sleep uh, while I do surgery on him thing and trim his teeth down. So as long as I chop the shrimp up, he can still eat it. And that's why I'm going through all this and chopping it up. And I'm hoping eventually, because I fed him some small snails today and he was eating them. And so I'm hoping if he eats enough of the small snails and starts chewing on the shells again, then he'll actually wear the teeth down uh, on his own. And I won't have to get in there and do any, uh, you know, surgery and whatnot. Hey, Annie. I've never bred plecos myself there, uh, Jay. Uh, the only fish that ever reproduce in my tanks are usually my live bears, so that's not really saying a whole lot. Uh, Selena, I believe you're gone already, but I'm smoking on my Wicked Space tonight. Or is this Hawaiian Puff? I lose track, honestly. They're very similar. Um, are the guppies multiplying in Butterbean's tank? I don't believe so. I haven't seen any babies in there. Oh, you're quite welcome, Gabriel. I don't remember being an inspiration to keep pea puffers. I haven't kept pea puffers in years. I never had much luck with them. I've tried, and I gave up.
So I was watching him earlier when I threw the snails in the tank. I just wanted to see how he would react. And at first he just kind of looked at him and then he looked at me like, seriously, dude, like, you know, I can't eat these. Right. And then he just kind of swam up to his floating area where I put the food in and he looked at them for a while, you know, and eventually he just went back down to the bottom where the snails were. And when I looked at him later, he was actually chewing on a snail. He had one in his mouth. So he did manage to pick it up. But the more I'm watching him, he's really looks like he's even starting to struggle to get even the, the small bits I've cut up into his mouth. So it's just one of these days I'm going to have to do that. I'm just not ready for it yet. <laughs> Maybe I'll start looking into it tomorrow and see about getting it done because it looks like he definitely needs to get it done at some point. So it's definitely his upper teeth are way too long. They need to be trimmed down, which sucks. I've had him for 10 years or more probably at this point. I've probably had him for more than 10 years, honestly. Um, and I've never had to mess with his teeth in all this time. So it was only recently that this happened, and I believe it's because I let the snail tank where I breed snails for him, I let the, um, the, the all the crushed coral that I had in there, I let most of that dissolve away. And as a result, the water wasn't very hard and there just wasn't much calcium in it. And I think the snail shells were getting so soft that it wasn't wearing his teeth down, even though he was eating snails on a regular basis. And eventually I noticed he wasn't eating the snails anymore. And now I, you know, I figured out why, but it's been, I don't know, God, it's been what, two months since we noticed that. And I still haven't gotten in there and done anything. So he's getting to look downright silly with his giant buck teeth at this point. Yeah, that's for sure, Gabriel, when everything's sticking over smooth. You can't ask for better than that. All right, we are still five or six inches from being done filling. I'm going to do another hit while I'm waiting. So as I have said several times this evening already, don't forget, I'm here for you to answer your questions, etc. Don't be shy, especially if you're new. Oh, I never answered the uh, questions about the ballet earlier either. I don't even remember who was asking me about that. Who was it that asked me about my favorite ballet? Was if the Swan Lake was my favorite ballet? Because I don't really have a favorite ballet. And I said I would talk about that, and I never did. When I first saw that, Gabriel, I thought it said two meters instead of two males. I just saw the 2M, and I was thinking, man, that's a big fish. No, I don't do ballet, but I was watching one tonight there. I, well, I, I, can't, I can't hardly tap my foot to Queen's We Will Rock You uh, without losing the beat. And you think I'm going to dance ballet? Dude, I couldn't carry a tune in a bucket. <clears throat> But I do uh, enjoy watching ballet from time to time. And tonight, just under the circumstances, the mood I was in, et cetera, 
uh, Swan Lake was what I chose to listen to. And Swan Lake did it for me. I got about halfway through it uh, before it was time to go live. And that, that decompressed my brain enough that I felt ready to go. Uh, but like I said earlier, I mean, I summed it up in a nutshell. Like why, like I, you know, you, it's, what, you know, why would anybody not enjoy ballet? You get to look at all these amazing bodies doing all these amazing things. You get to listen to a whole entire orchestra play a, you know, beautiful piece of music for a couple of hours and, you know, and then all the eye candy you could want dancing around on stage in front of me. It's awesome. Ah, uh, the dance of the sugar plum fairies, Nutcracker. Uh, that is, of course, my the hint I gave tonight was that Tchaikovsky uh, was who I, you know, the ballet was by Tchaikovsky. And I said, not that one, you know, his next most famous one. And, of course, Nutcracker would be that one because everybody knows Nutcracker. Um, and I actually was listening to and watching Nutcracker a few weeks ago, but it was not on a live stream night. So nobody got to guess that one. Oh, I don't know, Janice, maybe. First of all, I'd have to lock her down on a time, and then secondly, I'd have to learn how to use Zoom. Oh, that would be cool, Gabriel. Uh, yes, Jacqueline, I was uh, very much enjoying the Swan Lake this evening. And when you know the stories behind some of these like operas and ballets and stuff, they're fucking insane. I mean, these people are nuts with the stuff they came up with and these uh, stories they tell. <laughs> I don't blame you there, Zine. That'd be a fundraiser, wouldn't it? <coughs> Yeah, the flight of the Valkyries. That's I started. Um, the flight of the Valkyries is the second part of the Ring Cycle from Wagner. I uh, believe it's either the second or the third part. Um, either way, it doesn't matter. Uh, the Ring Cycle from Wagner is this insane fifteen-hour opera. It's amazing. But I started listening to it. I've gotten about two hours into it. Uh, each cycle is uh, four hours or more. Uh, it comes out to, it depends on who performs it. It's anywhere between 13 and 15 hours. I've seen it go as much as 15 hours. But that usually includes intermissions and, you know, uh, everything else. So it's this 12 or 13 hour opera. And it's four cycles and the Valkyries is the second cycle. So the Valkyries is a four hour piece and it starts with the flight of the Valkyries that we all know and love. You know, they played in Apocalypse Now as they were flying in their helicopter. And, um, you know, it's classic. But that's only the first part of a four hour part that's part of a 12 hour opera. It's, it's insane. And again, if you if you know the whole story of the uh, it's the ring of the Nibblingung. If you knew the whole story of the ring cycle, uh, it's crazy nuts. A lot of people say Tolkien got uh, a bunch of his Lord of the Rings stuff uh, from the ring cycle. And I, 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 I don't know. Hey, Lefty, how are you doing? Was the breakaway song for your second ship? I'm not exactly sure what that means, but that's cool. It's a classic. <laughs> I've never made it through the whole thing either. Uh, I've uh, like I said, I've gotten about two hours into the first part. Um, you know, you got to go through four hours of it just to get to the Valkyrie part. Yeah, that's what I thought you meant. Something like that, uh, Lefty. Uh, but opera is not the same as ballet, and I don't do ballet very often, but I do opera. Uh, uh, I do listen to opera fairly often. Um, I don't know why. I really don't know what put Swan Lake in my head tonight. <laughs> I hope nobody's imagined. Well, maybe if you want to imagine me doing some ballet, that's got to be good for a laugh for somebody. 
Um, I, again, I just I really don't know what put Swan Lake in my head. I must have heard it referenced or seen it go by on on recommendations or something a day or two ago. Um, but like I said, it did the trick. It was what I needed. Um, but I used to be a massage therapist, and like I don't know when I look at ballet dancers, I just I see like just absolutely amazing bodies. They look like they look like living muscle charts. I can literally see every muscle group on their bodies, and then they do these insane things. Um, it, it's, you know, some dude's running across the stage on his toes while he's carrying somebody else over his head. Um, you know, that's nuts. Uh, in, in a weird sort of way, I can appreciate those people that like WWE, uh, wrestling stuff. I don't personally, but for all the arguments I've heard over the years of people arguing, oh, whether it's real or it's fake or whatever, that's, that's missing the point. And the people I know that actually appreciate the WWE and actually do like it, um, it, it's but it's real and fake. It's fake in the sense like we know it's not real in the sense that they're uh, you know they're not necessarily predisposed to outcomes and so on and so forth. But it's real in the sense that that three hundred and fifty pound dude just did a double backflip off the top rope and landed on top of some other dude's head, and you know they did that. They, they spent hours and hours and hours practicing the choreography and everything else. But the, the athleticism involved in that is insane. Uh, again, I'm not into it myself, but I can appreciate how people look at that and go, man, this is all right. I like watching this. And that's what I think when I watch ballet. Um, I, you know, I don't see it as like twinkle toes kind of stuff at all. I just, you know, look at those dudes legs. I know tear your eyeballs away from the giant bulge. We get it. They wear a supportive piece under their leotard and it makes it look like they'll have potatoes stuffed down their drawers. Uh, but that's basically like a jock strap sort of thing they're wearing. Cause you probably really don't want to see, well, maybe you might, I don't know, but imagine them without that jock strap thing running around in leotards flopping everywhere. Uh, that wouldn't be any good or would it? I don't know. I guess it depends on your taste. Anyway, um, tear your eyes away from the <laughs> giant bulge and look at their legs. They're, look at their quads. Uh, they're insane. These people's bodies are nuts. And you get to watch them dancing around on stage for a couple hours while you listen to awesome music. I don't know. I, I don't see why anybody wouldn't want to watch uh, ballet. But it's not something I watch regularly. Uh, but as I said earlier, given my choice between uh, watching uh, a couple of hours of sports ball or a couple of hours of ballet, I'd definitely take the ballet uh, afternoon over the sports ball afternoon. But you all know how I feel about uh, sports ball games. All right, everybody, we are getting really, really close to finished at this point. From your point of view, you can probably barely even see the difference. <coughs> All right, let me uh, keep an eye on that until it's completely ready to turn off. Uh, let me get, stick my fingers in it real quick, make sure I didn't get the water totally off temperature. Yeah, that's fine. Again, as long as it's relatively close. Oh, did my lights turn off? I wonder if they have a timer or if the batteries have died. I can't imagine. Uh, let's try turning it back on and seeing what happens. Oh, yeah, that's plenty bright enough. So it must just have a timer and it turns itself off after a while. Well, that's good to know. If I ever forget it and leave it on, it'll uh, stay there. All right, we are... Almost there, everybody. Hang on. I'm going to try to get caught up here, but I don't want to get distracted reading. I'm just going to try to find my spot. It was somewhere around here. All right, same with cheerleaders. All right, I guess. I don't watch sports ball. All right, everybody, hang on. I'm coming down to the last minute, but I wanted to get back to where I was at my space, so I know where I am. Let me go turn that water off, and we will be done with our work for the night.
And indeed, we are done. So all I got to do is put the power head back up where it belongs and turn the filter back on. And we will be ready to cut a squat and sit down for the rest of the evening, however long that might turn out to be. Like I said, I'm up for a little bit of hanging out once I don't have to worry about stuff going on in the background anymore. All right, so we'll get the power head in place. So that is done. We will open the valve so the filter starts flowing again, and that is done. See, that's the difference between when you shut it off properly versus when you wait and let it suck air, and then you get a vapor lock in there. So tonight I shut it off while it was still completely full and running. So when I started it back up, all I had to do was close or, you know, I, it's, it's weird in my mind. I'm thinking I'm closing it. It's a little valve. If you're not familiar with it on the top of the canister filter, there's a little valve that flips up. And to me, that's opening the valve, but it's not, it's, it's closing the valve on the inside, but it's, opening it's flipping the little thingy up um and so i often say like oh you got to open the you know but you're not you're actually closing the valve when you do that um and so that's what i do before the water change i pull that little tab up which it's got a um, ball valve on the inside so when you pull that up it rolls that ball valve 90 degrees uh and seals off the the tubes so it doesn't have a traditional pump on the inside it just has an impeller so when you close that and there's water where the impeller is, the impeller is just spinning inside there. It's not hurting it to do anything. In fact, all it does is gently warm the water. I've, I've left it running like that for months before. Um, you know, I forgot to um, open the valve back up after water changes and come back months later to do a water change again. And it's like, oh, shit, it's still, you know, it's still closed from the last time I did it. And even then, the water inside of it was just kind of warm, you know, um, and that, that's it. it. It didn't hurt the, the filter at all. I just closed the thing and it was running again just fine. So that's what I do when I do a water change. I pull that little tab up while the tank is still full. And then when I'm done and the tank's filled again, I just push the little tab back down and the filter just starts flowing again. <clears throat> uh, right. Of course, I shook my hand and now I got to find my spot again. Oh, there we are. Oh, they get plenty hurt, Shamu. They get every bit as beat up as damn football or uh, hockey players do. <laughs> well, the bulge is real. I don't. I mean, I'm not sure how you're defining that necessarily, but the bulge is really there. You can see it. It's just maybe not uh, all filled up with what you think it is. Uh, cyber truck i have yet to see the cyber truck all right janice you're probably already gone Fish outside. Nice. My pond had ice on it this morning, eyeball. Just a thin skin, but it was definitely ice on it. Hey, collaboration. I wasn't talking about my bulge. We were talking about ballet. <laughs> we were talking about ballet dancers. <clears throat> Oh, for a larger tank, definitely a canister filter. Uh, sponge filters are good for biological filtration, but not very good for mechanical. Uh, a canister filter, you get the best of both. You get all the plenty of the water circulation. You get 
Um, you know, you're, you're drawing a lot of water in, so you're pulling a lot of material out of the water. You got the filters in there. So you've got the physical filtration, uh, and then you got trays worth of, um, you know, bio balls or, or ceramic rings or whatever you put in there. And so you've got all that biological filtration in there too. I like canister filters. You don't have all the stuff in the tank. It's just like a spray bar in the back and the hoses and stuff behind it. Um, they're just they're a pain in the butt to clean. That's the only real downside to them. But I like canister filters. I'm a fan of them. <laughs> I'm glad that makes that less weird for you. <laughs> I always think about the uh, movie. It was Val Kilmer's first movie. Maybe he might have done something earlier, but it was when when the world first learned who Val Kilmer was. Uh, what the uh, top secret? That's what it was. Um, it was an '80s movie. It was like a spoof spy movie, um, and Val Kilmer was in it, and a bunch of other people. Um, and there was a scene in there with ballet uh, and the men having the great big bulge in their uh, leotard or whatever. Um, so that's what I always think of. But like I say, if you're watching ballet and you tear your eyes off of that, there's a lot more to look at. <laughs> Yeah, do you remember that movie, um, Top Secret? Um, what? Let me scroll back here. I might be missing something. Oh, okay. Well, if you do that, Zine, and you can, um, you'll just, you'll, you don't have to worry a lot about mom building up because it's not necessarily bad for your tank. But there comes a point where, you know, enough is enough. You, you, you know, you don't need it four inches deep. You have to get it out of there at some point. So even if you have a lot of plants, uh, you know, plenty of circulation and air stone or whatever, uh, you can do that. You don't need to, to have an actual filter attached to the tank in the traditional sense, a power filter, that is. Um, but the mum won't have anywhere to go. The benefit of a power filter, even if it's just a very simple one, like a little hang on the back where the water just flows through a little, like, or even my simple one in, in the pond here, um, it's a pump and I have a hose that goes to a, a container and the container, I just stuff, um, you know, filter material in the container and that's it. And so it just draws water through that. So I pull that out, I stuff new filter material in and I'm done. And just by circling water through that in the in the pond, it's all underneath of my table down here. It's just trapping and collecting stuff. Uh, think about the the little things, little traps on the side of a swimming pool. So leaves and stuff like that, they wind up in there and not in the pool. It's nice to have something like that. So having a filter does serve a purpose, but it's definitely not necessary because when you think about it, that's mine is completely underwater. I mean, obviously all the stuff that's in that filter is still in the tank. The water is flowing over it and right back into the tank. But the same thing holds true for a canister filter. The same thing holds true for a hang on the back filter. The stuff you're removing, you're not removing it from the tank. You're removing it from your sight. It's just not swirling around in the water anymore. It's still in the water. It's just trapped on a filter pad and the water's flowing over it, but it's still there. It's still every bit is in the water. Um, I've always used the example of the swimming pool and a dirty diaper. If there was a dirty diaper that, you know, went over and it got caught in that little trap thing, would you say, okay, the water's clean now? Like, no, like it's still in the pool. It's right there. And so the same thing holds true with those filters. So you don't have to have that on there. It's not really doing a whole lot necessarily. The main thing your filter does is provide water circulation. I know a lot of people don't realize that, um, but that's the main thing. You could take the sponge filter out. You could take the, the filter part, you know, the, the mechanical filter part out. As long as the water is still flowing and giving you circulation and all that kind of stuff, 
the bio stuff is largely going to happen in the tank unless you've got a very bare glass tank or something. If you've got a little bit of substrate and a couple of rocks and stuff like that, then you've probably got enough, you know, surface area in the tank that just good water flow will give you your biologicals. You know, you don't really need to trap that material. So do what you want with that. I do like the idea of having a non filtered tank. I've done them in the past. Uh, my waterfall uh, was non filtered, but you have to get in there from time to time and just kind of vac out the corners and suck all the mall out and stuff like that. But that's really the only downside to it, honestly. Well, you know, with my canister on this tank, we've talked about earlier, um, I've forgotten to push that little thing closed before on, on this very tank. And it's been, oh, I think the longest I ever did, it was like three weeks. I've done it for several days before I've noticed it. Uh, you know, I'd be in there looking around like something don't look right. And then I'd realize like there's no water moving like the spray bar. Nothing's coming out of the spray bar. Oh, that's what's not right. And then I'd realize like, oh, I forgot to plug because I used to unplug the filter. Now I just flip that thing. Either way, it stops the flow. Um, so now I usually do something like I'll open the door where the filter sits and I'll leave it all the way open or something to remind me like, if that door is still open, you need to address the filter, then you can close the door. Um, but I've done it plenty of times. And even on this tank, it's been fine. I've never had any issues at all. Um, again, I Dan proof my tanks. Yeah, you could net stuff out too easy enough if you wanted to get in there and do that. So there's a difference between mom at least i don't know uh, just so that we all are talking about uh we all know we're on the same page you know um however other people may address it i don't know when i talk about mom specifically i'm talking about the stuff that's like a pale uh tannish color usually it's finer than baby powder it's like the siltiest of siltiness that's the end product of stuff that has been through all the biological processes in your tank. It's all the nutrients have been taken out of it. It's all broken down. Um, it's just, it's the, it's the leftover stuff um, that's in there. And so that's mulm when I'm talking about it. Detritus would be the stuff that swirls around the tank, like this leaf up here that's not fully decayed. You got little bits of uneaten food swirling around. Stuff that hasn't yet broken down or is in the process of breaking down, little bits of brown rotten leaves. Um, stuff like that is what I think of as detritus. And getting that out of the tank, um, you know, with a net or something, just again, like skimming a pond or skimming your pool with a net is fine. But Having good biologicals in the tank will help break that stuff down. So with plenty of water flow and plenty of oxygen, which is why having an air stone in your tank is always a good idea. Um, it keeps as much oxygen. Again, you're not forcing oxygen into the tank by using an air stone. You're just allowing the tank to have as much oxygen as it will accept. Let's just put it that way. And so by keeping it at maximum oxygen levels, it allows for those processes to happen, all that decomposition, all the, the detritus to become mulm has to break down. And all those processes are aerobic processes. They all require oxygen. So low oxygen levels in your tank or poor circulation does more than just not give your fish a lot of oxygen. It really prevents your tank from functioning properly. It'll prevent um, you know, the, the, the bacteria from breaking down the, the uneaten food, the fish poop, uh, the bits of leaves and decaying material to fall off. Uh, all of that needs oxygen to be broken down properly. In addition to a good, healthy bacterial culture and all that kind of stuff, you need all of that to function right. So low flow, low circulation, um, is not good, especially if you've got dead spots and dead zones with real thick vegetation that can prevent water from moving through it. You might get zones where there's really low oxygen. That's not necessarily good. Um, 
And of course, just low oxygenation, low flow on your filter, no air stone, uh, et cetera. It, it's just going to make your tank overall more difficult to manage. Um, I found over the years that as much as I used to hate them, the easiest thing you can do to make your tank function better and, and be healthier is put an air stone in it. You know, it's just, it'll make things better. It always does. Uh, unless you've got a very specific tank that can't really deal with that. I mean, if you've got a very small tank with a bed fish in it or something, maybe an airstone in those circumstances might not be the best ideas, but for the most part, you get the idea. And I do have an airstone in my bed tank. I just have it very carefully uh, placed and regulated. So it's not really disruptive at the surface, but I do have an airstone in my bed tank. Uh, both of them, even the one in the office has an airstone in it. No, Ark, where do you think those bones came from? And it's not the guppies, it's the goldfish. Where do you think the bones came from in the uh, uh, goldfish tank? I'm right there with you, Zine. I, that's why I change my canister filters out once every six months or whatever. I, I don't know. I just, I hate it too. It's a pain in the ass. I don't mind on the hang on the backs. Um, and then the sponge filters, all you got to do is pull them out once every so often and squeeze them out and get all the grunge out of them until water can flow freely through them again and then put them back in the tank. And they're, you know, that's all you need to do with the sponge filters. So that's not hard. Um, and even that you don't have to do very often. Um, but the canisters are pain in the ass. You got to unplug them or, you know, disconnect them and then just pull the hoses off and it's pain in the ass. I get it. I I'm with you. Believe me. Well, again, I don't do it very often. I just, you know, when I when the mood strikes me or, you know, I've just got time and I'm just like, all right, this needs to be done. Let's just do it. Um, but usually it's when I'm like, all right, let's go do some fish stuff. You know, I'm like in the mood to come down here and do some fish stuff. I put my headphones on and, you know, and then I'll do a series of them and, you know, just kind of do one after another. And I might spend two hours down here working on tanks. Um, but I do that a couple times a year, maybe. Yeah, you definitely have to be in the right mindset to clean canister filters. There's no doubt about that. You just guys gonna do this now. This is this is gonna be my project. I'm gonna do canister filters, and it's a pain in the butt. It is. It sucks. Sponge filters in your beta tanks, beta. <clears throat> All right. Any more questions, anybody? That was some good conversation. Yeah, like I say, it comes across every once in a while. I've opened up canister filters before, uh, namely on my other 125, Daryl. That's a very heavily populated tank. It's, you know, that's, that's a lot of stuff going on in that tank. And... Believe it or not, most of the grunge, when you open those filters and you see all that sort of slimy blackish brown stuff that's all built up and whatnot, that's not the leftover stuff and mom. That's bacterial stuff. You know, when you pull your biofilter out and your biofilter's got all that pudding all over it or whatever it is, and it's, you know, you, you rinse it off, it all just turns the water black or whatever. Um, that's the same kind of stuff you've got going on in your uh, canister filter as that builds up. And it's more dead bacteria and that kind of stuff, like leftover colonies from all the microbial life that's in there breaking that stuff down. It's more that than it is fish poop. And, you know, th that fish poop is so long ago broken down and so decomposed. Like, they, they no trace. It, we're, we're talking it's down to, like, phosphorus and, and, and nitrogen, you know, it's all those things that have all broken down out of it. Um, it, it's, it, it can't even be classified as poop anymore. Um, the, the plant material can't even be classified as plant material anymore. It's gone. It's just this leftover stuff. That's mostly again, the, the remains of all the bacteria that ate it. And so that's what's mostly in your tank. It's not necessarily harmful for anything. It's not, um, it's not a nitrate. 
factory. It's not adding nitrate to the tank. It produces the nitrate as it breaks it down. But once it's broken down, it's broken down. It's not just continually streaming nitrate into your tank. The nitrate happens as it's broken down, and then it's done. So, you know, remember, nitrate is... Nitrate is just a nitrogenous compound. It's, it's made of nitrogen and oxygen. And so there's only a finite amount of nitrate or, or nitrogen in any little speck of leaf that's going to break down. So when that little speck of leaf breaks down and the nitrogen that's in it is released as nitrate, it's released. There, It's gone. It's not like that piece of leaf does not keep putting nitrate into your tank. And so that stuff that gets into your filter and is rotten and is broken down, is all black and gross and gooey and nasty. That's not adding any nastiness to your tank. The, the stuff that was getting into your tank happened as that stuff was being generated. Sure. But now that it's that stuff, that stuff itself is not producing any more dirtiness or, or anything into your tank. It really isn't. That's a very common misunderstanding that people think it's just all that filth is just in your tank. It, it's not. It's not hurting a damn thing. Now, what it is doing is reducing the flow through your filter. It's clogging your filter up and it's reducing how freely the water can flow through it, which brings me to what my original point was going to be. <laughs> I got back there. Uh, on my other 125, Daryl, that's such a heavily populated tank with so much stuff going on in there. That filter gets clogged up really quickly. And I've gone in there before. And when I opened the trays, they were solid with, again, what looked like chocolate pudding. It was like gel in there. But where if you look inside of a canister filter, all the trays are stacked up. And there's usually one tube that goes all the way to the bottom. So the inflowing water goes to the bottom and it comes up through all the trays and gets filtered. Well, in this case, more than once this has happened, the water would go down the bottom and then it had just cut a channel through the silt effectively, you know, you know, like when the reservoir was low and the, and the stream was running over all the, the sediment and silt, it cut a channel down through it. Um, this is the same thing when the filter got so clogged, water couldn't flow through the filter anymore. It found a way and cut a channel and so effectively that canister filter was doing nothing more than circulating water. Um, that's fine, but it wasn't filtering anything anymore. It wasn't collecting any crud. It wasn't collecting any bits of leaf or, or fish poop or anything like that. It wasn't running water through the um, uh, biological material. The biological material was basically sealed in goo. I mean, it was just sealed in brown pudding. Like no water was flowing through the filter at all. It was going down the tube and then it was flowing right up the outside of the tube in this little channel it had cut and then right back into the tank. And that was it. It, it wasn't going through the filter uh, proper in any way. It was just going in and right back out. Um, and God knows how long it sat there running like that. So all I effectively had was a circulation pump running and the tank was fine. Everything was fine. It's just, it's always fine. Uh, if you set your tank up, right, they can pretty much be worry free. I worry about things like power outages and, and, uh, heater failures and stuff like that. I don't worry about, uh, ammonia and, and, and bacteria and, and stuff like that. that. That stuff doesn't concern me a bit. It's, it's power failures and things like that that bother me uh, or worry me, I should say. <clears throat> All right, let me see where I was now. There I was, somewhere back here. Okay, Jacob, how are you doing? Uh, I do have quite a few koi in my pond, uh, four of them, five of them, bunches of goldfish, though. Uh, and once I get a hold of Steve on a weekend, we're going to dig out my outdoor pond, uh, which has nothing in it at the moment. Uh, a lot of hair algae, but other than that, nothing's in it outside right now. Uh, me and Steve are going to dig that out. We're going to dig it bigger. We're going to dig it deeper. Uh, we're going to turn it into the $6 million man pond, apparently, from the way I'm describing it. And then the koi that are in this pond are going to go outside and then they'll be permanent outdoor koi. And hopefully over the years, we'll get them to be nice big koi. Um, yeah, I've done that quite a few times. Eyeball. Mel, you made it. 
I've never had a tank with a sump on it, uh, TK. <laughs> there you go, uh, Zine. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. You don't, you know, there's you don't need that canister filter on there. It's not doing anything you, you can't do in other ways, you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh collaboration. That's exactly what it is. Oh, I'm glad to hear it, Jacob. Nice. And that is, um, okay, Mel, I'll check out the, uh, my email. Probably won't check it out tonight. Honestly, when I go upstairs after one of these, the last thing I'm thinking about doing is looking at more fish stuff and so on and so forth. I'm trying to start decompressing so I can get to bed before 6 AM. Cause that's when I usually get to bed. Um, one of the things I try to make stop sign me, please. Um, one of the things I try to make uh, almost a theme uh, here, and I have several of them, most of them revolve around being encouraging and positive and focusing on people that are new coming into the hobby. Um, you know, I just, just people can be assholes out there and I know how difficult it can be to, to find people that are willing to ask, you know, answer simple questions and, and without getting mocked and so on and so forth. So we get none of that here. Um, but I'm also really keen on the idea that fish keeping is a personal experience. It's, you know, it's like a tattoo. I'm not going to bust your chops about your tattoo. If you like it, my fucking opinion don't matter one tiny little bit. Uh, it's your tattoo. If you think it's an awesome tattoo, good on you. Uh, that's the only person that it matters to. And the fish tank is the same way. If you like dirted tanks, if you like bare glass bottoms with a sponge in it, you do you, you know, uh, drives me crazy. The people out there that are, are the, um, you know, this is the way you're supposed to set a fish tank up. And if you're not doing it this way, you're not doing it right. And, you know, like that, that's not what people need to hear. And I really hate when I'd see people ask a question like, um, you know, I have a half an inch of uh, gravel in my tank and right now um, I'm having, a, you know, I got a little bit of an ammonia spike and my fish are swimming around funny. What do I do? Telling them that they should have set their tank up with two inches of gravel and put plants in it isn't helpful. How does that help them? They're, they're, that's not the world that we live in. That may, may be true. It may be true that it, it would have been better if they set their tank up that way, but they didn't. And, and what they did do is set their tank up this way, and they're now having this problem, and that's what they need help with. Don't fucking tell them what they should have done and, you know, shut up. That's not helpful. Um, if you asked me that question, I would start thinking about, well, the first thing you need to do is a water change, you know, and then, and we'd work through it and we'd get through the issue and then we can worry about maybe talking about how to set the tank up differently or, or moving forward, we can do this or whatever, but let's address the problem at hand in the world we're actually living in versus the imaginary world you think they should have done and blah, blah, blah. Like, shut up. That is not helpful. You're like yelling at people and like, I don't know, but I just don't do that here. And again, the whole idea of there being a way to do this or the right way to do this, or even the best way to do this. I can't even say there's a best way to do it. If you, you know, if, if one person thinks the best way to do it is having a bare glass bottom tank with nothing in it, it's a sterile environment, and that's the safest, healthiest thing or whatever. But if you're somebody that likes lots of plants and a natural looking tank or whatever, then that's not the best way. Then you're not going to be happy keeping fish if that's the way you're supposed to keep fish. You know, so there is no best way of doing it. Um, they all function. You have to, to treat them differently. You have to maintain this one differently than you have to maintain that one, etc. But as long as you're maintaining them properly, there's there's it's still perfect. You can have a perfectly healthy tank without doing it this way. You know, you can do it that way, and it can still be a healthy tank provided you maintain it properly according to how it's set up. Uh, yeah, and like why people don't get that through their head that like it, it's not unhealthy. 
necessarily. It's just different. Like, I don't know. But again, I just, that's kind of the theme of this channel is I just don't bust people's chops over their aquariums or whatever. I try to help people with their problems. Um, so that's, I assume why I'm still not a popular channel or whatever. If I was here being an asshole and yelling at people and, uh, stirring up shit and, you know, then I'd probably have 10,000 uh, more views on every one of my videos, but I gotta be me. That ain't my personality. I have no desire to do that. So here I am with what 28 people watching my live stream after years and years and years of doing this. So there you go. But I gotta be true to myself. Yeah, the HOB, the hang on the back, and then the sponge is a good combination. You get the best of both worlds. I don't like the sponge because I don't like taking up the real estate inside the tank, and I don't like the way it looks. So, uh, like in my quarantine tank down there, I got a sponge filter in it because it's a quarantine tank. Um, but for my display tanks, if you will, um, I really don't like the sponge filters unless I can't avoid them. I did put one in my ham tank, my go my fancy goldfish tank, for those of you who don't know what my ham tank is. Um but I was getting cloudy water. I just, the, the, I got three hang on the backs and it was not dealing with the tank. I had to put that sponge filter on there. Once I put the sponge filter on there, the water cleared up. So those goldfish produce a lot of waste apparently. All right. Yeah, exactly. Zine. Um, I always say the same thing about, uh, test equipment. You know, people ask me, Oh, what's the best test equipment? Uh, is it, you know, is it the drops? Is it the drip sticks? Is it the, you know, should you get a, a meter with takes batteries? You know what the best equipment is? The best test stuff is, is the one you're going to use. You know, I'm not going to tell you to use the drops and the bottles and all that if you think that's a pain in the ass and you're just not going to use it then you know use the dip steps then if, if you if you'll use those use them they're just as accurate they're good enough if, and, and so whichever ones you're going to use that's the right ones to use uh it's just it's I, there is no one that's better the one you're going to use is the best one for you to use buy that one you know, that way you'll use it. I'd rather see you using dip strips than having a fresh bottle of stuff and an unused vial next to it. Um, you know, buy the dip strips and use those. If you're going to use them, use them. Two hundred and fifty degrees. I was going to say, is that C or F? You beat me to it, Jay. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you're here too, collaboration. And it's definitely quality over quantity, that's for sure. They look like cuts of ham floating around in there, Art. Uh, I know what you're talking about, Mel. Those are all right. They're pretty small and indiscreet. Um, yeah, if you become a member, you get an extra members only live stream on a Wednesday. Uh, and you also get access to the discord server where we got all kind of good stuff going on over on, uh, there. EJ, how are you doing this evening? Internal filters. I don't like internal filters for the same reason I don't like the um, sponge filters. It's just, it's a real estate and a visual thing. If you've got a tank with a lot of plants and it's kind of tucked away in the back and you can't really notice it, that's not too bad. I've done that before uh, with internal filters. Um, they're efficient. They're super duper, duper, duper quiet. And if you're in a area where you're, you know, the tanks maybe on your desk and it's right up against the wall and you just can't really, um, you know, 
they serve their purpose is what I'm saying. I, you know, I see the reason to use internal filters occasionally. Um, I just don't like them again, because of the, the fact that it just takes up real estate. And I honestly don't like seeing the spray bars. I don't like seeing the tube that goes down. I don't want to see anything in there that don't look natural. I don't even like that damn piece of slate in there. You have no idea how much that piece of slate in there bothers the shit out of me, but I'm really hoping those um, discus, lay eggs on it at some point. Every time I look in there and I see that thing, I always tell myself, you know, dude, every time you're at the reservoir, you always see a tire, you always see a fucking bottle or a beer can, no matter how pristine it looks, you always see some fucking thing, you know? So that's my thing is that stupid piece of slate in there. I feel like I'll just chuck an old tire in the tank and have done with it. You know, um, I hate that thing, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. I got to have plumbing in my tank. Um, I don't have to have an internal filter and I don't have to have the sponge filter, uh, except of course in my ham tank, which I did have to put the sponge filter. And even that one, I got one of the small triangular ones that I could tuck into the corner and it's a little less obtrusive, you know? So even then I went as small as I could go and you don't really notice it. It's behind, a, uh, an Anubius and a red tiger lotus is growing. So you don't really notice that there's a sponge filter in the back unless you really look. Um, otherwise I wouldn't have it in there at all. If I didn't really need it in there, I saw something dart across the, uh, tank out of the corner of my eye. I didn't know what the hell that was. It was one of my loaches chasing another one of my loaches. So it looked like it was something about that long. It was two loaches end to end. But I just had a foot long fish dashing across the side of my tank. Okay, Mei Ling, thank you. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing well. Is the discus the beef tank, if that's the ham tank? To be the turkey tank, maybe. Yeah, it was a very short loach train, but it was a high-speed bullet train. <laughs> Those things were flying. I think I know what you're talking about there, Laura, but I'm not a hundred. I mean, uh, Mel, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Yeah, that's true. You just sort of work it in. Like you say, put it into the plants and stuff like that. I even try to hide my, um, air stones and, the, and not just the air stone itself. I try to hide the bubble streams. I don't like the look of bubbles in a tank. I've said that before. Um, but I have come to appreciate how, what, how good they are, you know? So it's one of those things like, I don't know. I know wearing a safety vest makes me look like a dork when I walk down the street, but I still wear one cause it's better than getting hit by a car. Um, bubbles in the tank do not look good, but the benefit I get for what they do for my tank just so outweighs what they look like. And after a while, uh, I just, I've, I've sort of changed the way I think about it. I've come to associate those bubbles with the health of the tank to the point that when I see the bubbles now, it's almost a reassuring site. It lets me know that it's good for the tank and, and so on and so forth. Kind of like, this is going to be a weird comparison. I'm going to take a left turn here. Um, everybody used to, to everybody I've ever met that's ever eaten, uh, psilocin mushrooms or psilocybin mushrooms always complains about the way they taste. And I've always argued that I don't mind. I'm not gonna say I like the way they taste because frankly, they taste like mushrooms and cow shit. Um, but I don't mind the way they taste because my brain instantly associates that flavor with like, I know what's going to happen in about a half an hour. And so that's, I don't mind that flavor because my brain's like, all right, all right. You know, we know, we know where this leads. And, and so it's almost the same sort of association. I don't like air stones, but when I see them, my brain's like, all right, everything's going good in that tank. And so I make that positive association with them now. And as a result, I don't mind looking at them so much, but even if I can, I still try to put them in a corner. I still try to tuck them out of the way. I still try to put them behind plants uh, or, or something like that. 
because there's just not too many places that I see naturally that have these giant columns of bubbles rising up out of the bottoms of the tank uh, to the surface of the water. That's very much an aquarium thing. And I like my aquariums to look natural. And, uh, you know, some people like an aquarium look. Some people like the treasure chest that bubbles and the top pops open. They like the dude in the old-fashioned, you know, uh, diving suit or the wrecked airplane in the bottom or, or big skulls or whatever. And, again, I'm all for that if that's – uh, if you think that's cool looking, you like that decor, you like whimsical stuff or whatever. Um, I I like a very natural uh, look and feel to my tank. So I don't like seeing that spray bar and I don't like seeing the filter intake and I don't like seeing a big column of bubbles rising up. But that's just me. <clears throat> well, that's what I was getting ready to say, Zine, but I decided not to. I didn't really need to. It's the it's the continuous column thing. I do see bubbles all the time when I'm out at the reservoir, when I'm in rivers and lakes, but it's usually when I've stepped into a bunch of ooze and the bubbles come up and then it smells like ass, um, you know, or I'm out in the reservoir and I'll see a little column of bubbles come up for a moment and then it stops. Um, that could be a carp or a turtle down in the mud on the bottom. It could be just some gases that have come up, you know, erupted out of the bottom as, as stuff decomposes. But you don't ever see this column of bubbles like a, you know, it's just very unnatural looking. Uh, it's like some sort of like thermal vent, except there's bubbles instead of hot water coming out of it. Um, I just don't like it. <clears throat> um. This is Java Fern. I'm not sure what you're calling Asian water fern. It might be. So that's Java Fern. Uh, we got some Java Windelob over here, and that's got like the little frilly bits on the fingertips. Uh, all of this down here is Crypt. And then this is Crypt in the corner, and this is Anubius. Obviously, that's not what you're talking about. Um, but this is uh, Java Fern, if you're asking Newts. <laughs> oh, that's so far before your time, Zine. I wonder if I could. Uh, wonder if you'd be able to find that. I have no idea, EJ. That that could could very well be it. I have no idea what it is. Uh, the green plant in the tank is not the red one. Uh, if you really need to know, I can look up the name you typed in and see if it comes up the same stuff. Uh, or I guess you can too. Um, all I know it is as Java fern. I've heard it referred to as Indian fern before, but I've never heard it referred to as Asian fern. Uh, do I have any Anubias right now? I don't think I do. And I don't really have any I need to trim down either. I do have some new growth in the 29, though. That'll need trimming in another six months. <laughs> um no, I'm trying to let that stuff grow as long as I can. So I don't want to get in the uh, my other 125, Daryl, unless I, you know, unless it gets to the point where it's restricting the fish moving around like it was before and I had to get in there and trim it down. Uh, as long as I don't have to do that, I'm not going to. So, no, I do not think I have any Anubias to spare at the moment. Think he'll let me tickle his chin. I wish you guys could all see him in person and actually really get a feel for how big and thick and meaty that fish is because he's really a beast. Holy crap, it's almost 11 o'clock. All right, everybody, we're going to start winding it down here soon. Let me make sure I still got good mic battery. Um, we'll get out of here, I guess, by 11 uh, as usual. So any last thoughts or whatever? Again, I'm not going to leave it at this instant, but let's start, uh, you know, start winding down i got that one fish doing that weird crazy curly q stuff again and then he straightens out and he swims perfectly normal what in the hell is he doing 
I wonder if I put the camera on him will he do it again. Let me just see if he does it again. If he does it again, we'll try to get a look at him. Oh, he's doing it again. He did it once and then he stopped. Damn fish. Now he's blowing bubbles. I don't know. Maybe we're gonna have a dead, uh, dead goldfish at some point. Uh, I got one goldfish that does these weird like corkscrews, but he always does them upwards, like in a very controlled fashion, uh, almost like he's spiraling towards the surface. And then he stops, and then he just swims away and just looks perfectly normal. And that last time he did it, and I was gonna see if he'd do it again. He did one little loop. And then rolled over, and then when he went back down, he went all the way to the bottom, and then started going like, bloop, 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 and like blowing little bubbles out of his mouth, almost like he had rolled over on his back to gulp air, and it went down to the bottom. So I don't know if he's just goofing off, or or what. But I mean, typically when you see a fish that's swimming in corkscrews, they don't have long for this world. And the first time I saw that fish doing that was what a couple of weeks ago. So I don't know what is up with that. Oh, Jesus, I just saw one actually uh, come out of the water. It uh, breached. <laughs> that is uh, crazy. All right, let's do a hit out of this stupid bong since I brought it in here, and it's still sitting here after all this time. Again, this is my uh, stuff I got from my neighbor. This is outdoor grown. Uh, what did he call it? Hartford County Hillside. So it's not bad. I normally like to drizzle my hash oil on it, but we're not going to worry about that tonight. We're just going to go ahead and hit on glam drink here. We're going to do it raw, no ice. So I don't, I don't know. I don't, it's too big to do proper size hits uh, without the ice in it. Uh, but we'll, we'll do our best. We'll see what we can do here. <clears throat> me, me, me. Look at him. Can you see him? Yeah, you can see him. He does this weird where he floats upwards. I guess that's why they call those leaf fish. They sort of look and behave like leaf fish, but they're not. <clears throat> Look at these small ones. <laughs> relatively small. I should get three or maybe even four hits out of that bud that I crushed into there. <coughs> I'm definitely going to not try to do it in two because I don't want to spend the last 10 minutes of the live stream coughing at you. I'm glad you found me too, EJ. Oh, little man just walked in the room. He hardly ever comes in. You want to say hi to everybody, little man? You want to say hi? Uh, you can kind of see his butt. He's going to back away now because he's scared. Well, you can sort of see him there a little bit. Uh, that is Professor Lil Omen. I usually just call him my little man because he is my little man. But he's very skittish and shy. Now, of course, Squeaker hears me talking, so Squeaker's coming over. No, Squeaker, you had your 15 minutes. Oh, look at everybody. i got brand new... Uh, Brand new purple slippers. Those last ones I had were getting pretty fucking manky. <laughs> I go through slippers every few months. They get pretty gross from having, you know, stuff spilled on them and water dripped on them. So brand new purple slippers tonight. All right. Asian water fern. I'll have to try to remember that. Uh, one platy not eating and its belly is sunken. <coughs> I really don't know what to tell you there, Jacob. Um, it could be parasites, but if it is, you're going to have a hard time uh, dealing with it because if the fish isn't eating, uh, the most effective way to get rid of parasites is to feed them food that's antiparasitic like a, a levamisole uh, flake. Um, or if you can get ivermectin and you can get the fish to eat the, the, you know, flake food or something that's got ivermectin in it, uh, that would work. But if it's not eating, getting something in it, that's going to get rid of gut parasites is not necessarily going to be easy. Um, and honestly, I don't really know what you would even put in the water to do that. 
Um, you could try giving it a salt bath. That might help. Maybe try treating the tank with a uh, broad spectrum antibiotic. That might help. If it's a parasite, probably won't, but it might be a bacterial infection, in which case it would. All right, see some newts. <laughs> you guys are killing me with the newts. I'm trying not to make my reference because it's just going to make me sound like an old man. You hear that? You're getting more compliments down there, Kent. He knows he's cute. You don't have to blow his head up any bigger than it already is. Oh, you're quite welcome, Zine. I'm glad to hang out with everybody. Yeah, that's, I didn't really want to say that, Jacob, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, there's probably not a lot you can do. Just kind of wait for it to die and be done with it and get it out of the tank. Uh, hopefully, it's not problematic uh, as far as infecting the other fish. If you really do think it's a parasite, though, you know, it might not be a bad idea to just put it in a quarantine tank or something because most parasites pass to other fish. You know, they're not singular animal type things. Parasites have a cycle where they get passed out of the fish's gut. Uh, or, or sometimes in, in very, very unusual circumstances, some par fish parasites have to be eaten by a bird, you know, uh, like a wading bird or something will eat those fish, uh, get the parasite in its gut. And then when the bird shits in a lake, it, that's how it gets back into fish again um, in a very strange cycle. But there's only one uh, parasite I know that lives that life cycle, and it's usually called black ick or black spot disease. Very, very, very rare in aquarium fish. You might get it in pond fish, uh, but very rare for fairly obvious reasons uh, in your uh, aquarium fish. Um, but if so, if you do think it has a you know a parasite, you might want to get it out because it might pass eggs or spores or who knows what, uh, depending on the parasite, it might pass them out of its gut and uh, infect your other fish. <laughs> well, that is very true there, collaboration, uh, and you're not wrong. Oh, he is separated. Okay, well, there you go then. Try giving him a salt bath. If you got some antibiotics, go ahead and give it a shot, see if it works. You never know. Just don't get your hopes up. Yeah, but Gen X is getting old there, EJ. And I'm fairly early Gen X, too. I'm an aging Gen Xer. I didn't come in. I was born in 71, so I was five solid years into the Gen Xers uh, by the time I came along. He stares in corners. No, I'm not sure what you're talking about, Zine. Nineteen seventy five. Nice. Um I could add a Lord of the Rings category to the Discord area. Yeah, blonde guppies. That's awesome. All right, everybody. Let me uh, keep working on this. Oh, a weird snail parasite. I kind of thought that's what you were talking about. Um, there's all kind of weird parasites out there that turn animals into zombies and grow fungus out of their head. And, like, it gives me the willy heebie jeebies or whatever. I don't, I don't like thinking about all the weird parasites out there.
told you I'm not doing huge ones here because I'm gonna spend the rest of the night coughing. We're gonna do at least three out of that bud. All right, Joseph. Thank you for hanging out this evening. Been lurking quietly in the background as usual. <coughs> So we will be back, of course, Sunday night. It is Friday, isn't it? Yeah, we'll be back again Sunday night, uh, 8 p.m. We'll do it again, you know, at least till 10. Anything after that, we'll, we'll see how I feel Sunday night. We usually go to 11. You never know. <clears throat> All right, Jacqueline, hopefully we'll see you uh, Sunday. <laughs> Stop that just in time. <coughs> uh, uh, anything beyond that was going to be horrible. You know, when you get to that last all burnt up nasty bit. See, that's why I like vaping the hash oil and not smoking the weed. It's, you know, it's, it's the law of diminishing returns. At first, it's great. But you, the heat vapes off a lot of the um, you know, stuff from the outside and like you know, every hit after that, unless you either do one hits, which I did and I stuffed a big ass bud in there and there's no way I was going to try to do that in one hit. That would have freaking killed me. And so again, I stopped just in time before we got to the bottom of the barrel, nasty shit. And it really made me choke and cough. <laughs> so we avoided that fortunately. Oh, uh, let's see. 8 p.m. Eastern time. Friday nights, uh, I do, uh, you know, again, 8 to 10. Uh, and Sunday night, I do 8 to 10. But I usually wind up going over that. You never know. I schedule in my brain 8 to 10, and then we see where it ends up. Uh, usually when my mic dies and stuff like that is when I finally shut up uh, and actually get out of here. Um, but I also do a... Wednesday live stream for my members only, and that's eight o'clock on Wednesday night, and that is uh, for two ninety nine a month membership, and you get access to that one uh, here on YouTube, and you also get access to Discord where we do all sorts of other stuff over there on Discord, and you can post your stuff and contribute and so on and so forth. So you get a lot of value for your dollar, uh, and while you're two ninety nine uh, compared to what I've seen most other YouTubes. Uh, channels offer for their members and so on and so forth. So check that out if you're interested. You will get a third live stream at the very least every week, uh, but you also get access to Discord if you're interested in that. So there you go. Two ninety nine a month uh, is a good damn deal if you ask me. Oh, uh, I don't want to imagine that eyeball. All right, people, I'm going to be itching and scratching. I have to go take another shower after I leave. How does one know if they have their worm? I don't know, Zine. How does one know if they have a worm? Was that a setup for a joke? Or like, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you there. Go see the vet. I guess you would. Uh, are you are you concerned? Do you think you might have a worm? starting to worry me anyway i'm gonna leave it at that um i'm gonna say good night <laughs> what is that saying no you do wonder if you have a worm all right well i don't know what to tell you there i'm starting to worry me though all right, everybody. I will see you guys on Sunday. Thank you for hanging out <laughs> uh, with me tonight. I enjoyed it as usual. The evening flew by. I can't believe it's 11 o'clock already, but that's how it usually goes. So thank you again, and I will see you hopefully on Sunday night. All right, everybody. We hear you there, Squeaker. Good night. <laughs>